Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> you guys want to hear a story? <laughs> All I'd right. love to. Yesterday, and I, I want to see how you guys would respond in this situation, because I don't think this has ever happened to me in my entire life until literally yesterday. But I go to come and go. I go to the gas station. I give the individual twenty dollars. I say fifteen dollars on my pump. She, so you're expecting five dollars and change. She gives me ten dollars. I notice it right away and just shove the shove it in my pocket and walk off. Mm -hmm. And on that walk, I spent like a good ten minutes after that thinking about this. I'm like, was that wrong of me, or do I just like take a lucky break and you know I made five bucks? It's only five bucks. Right. And I thought about it, too, if, like, obviously, if a friend did that, I would never in a million years, like, take the extra money. If a stranger did that, I would like to think that I wouldn't take the extra money neither. But in my head, I was like, let's come and go's money. I don't exactly, really yeah, give a shit, honestly. That's what I was going to say. Nobody's really losing any money by that happening. No. Like, $5 to me is a lot more to me than $5 to come and go is, like, exactly. an organization. So I was – I justified in my head, and I ended up keeping it, but – I thought about that. Like, what would you guys do in that situation? I would have done the same thing you did. Probably the same thing. I would have yeah. justified it the same way, too. <laughs> Honestly, I just, yeah. I wanted to bring you guys on today just so I didn't feel like such a piece of shit. Oh, no. I don't just think, like, not I think that would be the normal thing to do is people just to take the five and run. <laughs> it's normal to be a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Because I definitely thought, thought, a little bit lower of myself for like two minutes and then I was like, eh, whatever. It's in the past. That's good. Yeah, you'll be all right. So it's like finding five dollars on the bi on the ground, you know, just take it. And yeah, I good point. I feel like if if it was a different circumstance with a stranger and like not a business, you probably would have given the money back, you know? If you saw somebody drop Like if it. for some reason she asked you for change or something or something like that and she gave you extra money, I'm sure you would have given it back. Like the inter like the exchange was between me and her mm -hmm. as a person. Just you and her. I Not think I think I would. I think I would. Mm -hmm. I don't I see why I, would. I wouldn't. Like yeah. I I don't. It all comes down to like dishonesty for me, mm -hmm. and it's like justified dishonesty when it comes to come and go, mm -hmm. but when it comes yeah. to the individual like her, like I don't know her situation. I I don't know if she's like doing well in life, and I don't know how. I don't know, maybe she needs to, like, buy diapers, and I don't really have too many Something. responsibilities right now. <laughs> you know, it's, like, way easier to be empathetic of her versus, yeah. like, a big corporation. We see the direct impact, too, of what you're doing, like, taking it from her compared to come and go. What if it's a method? I mean, still. What do you mean? I don't know why you're doing business with a method, yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> My buying method? <laughs> <laughs> Just casually buying meth in yeah. Springfield, Missouri from a boogan. But I, no, think, I think more than anything, I would give them the money back. Because they're probably going through it more than anybody. <laughs> they need it. They yeah. need it. <laughs> probably for meth, but <laughs> yeah, fine. They're going to do some really, really gross shit to get that money. Might as well just, yeah. Five bucks is five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. Yeah. <laughs> what, if, what if a soccer ball is left at a soccer field? Mine. Yeah. Yours? You're Take taking it? Taking it. <laughs> Tell them what we did with the Missouri State Bowl. Oh, yeah. There was a, you know, the like the soccer field right by glass hall and all that there was one of those really nice like hundred dollar practice balls out there but the field was locked up so i had to like i climbed the fence it was like the m like 5 p.m on a wednesday in the middle of the day and i like like had to climb fence. the fence it was like a seven foot yeah, fence or something that's a big we got fence. the ball i mean we got it <laughs> it's a nice ass <laughs> ball we lost it though or i didn't yeah, feel bad good. about it hey. it's a nice ball <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's <laughs> funny. So is the Missouri State soccer it's like, teams? Yeah, it's one. Of, it said like Missouri State University, like practice or something. You also get you get a ball and a story too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I think I've I think I've kicked those around before. Those are nice. Those, those are super nice. nice. Dude, it was like totally different than any of, any other soccer ball yeah. I've used in a long time. Really? Yeah, it was nice. nice. I had a friend lose. The nicest ball I ever had was my friend lost my ball, which I used to like love this ball even though it was like thirty dollars and he's like no worries i'll just give you this other ball and his dad was a coach so he used to get balls from lou fuse like the soccer club mm -hmm. so it was like this hundred dollar mls ball with like the nice little grooves on oh, it yeah. Really? yeah those are nice those are super nice mm -hmm. yeah. most people probably wouldn't think that there's a difference you know between just a normal 
twenty dollar ball and like a hundred dollar ball, but there's a big difference. Big <laughs> difference. Touch, shot, crossing, everything, mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot different. I feel like they're heavier, but they also get hit way harder. Like they're harder to save. It's cool to feel out a ball too. Yeah. Cleats are the same way. Yeah. Cleats are way, way different. <laughs> <laughs> like cheap cleats versus expensive cleats. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's insane. I'm sure that's like that for every sport though. Especially like the weight. I remember the mm-hmm. first time I ever wore like F fifties versus my like bulky shoes before that. Yeah, I felt so much quicker. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I it's those, crazy. I had one of those yeah. sock shoes or whatever, and th- it didn't feel like there was anything on my feet. The ones with, like, the, the ankle, mm-hmm. the right of the ankle, it, it those were nice. Like, yeah. The Magistas? Or yeah. Or the Mercurials, yeah. They were, I got it for, like, my birthday for senior year. It was, like, 270 or 280. Dude, they were, like, totally different than anything I've ever worn. Yeah. They got fucked up super fast, though. No, really? Yeah. Why? Because they were so thin? I did. I played a lot of soccer on them, but... It, w- it lasted like half the soccer season senior year. Oh wow, but that's crazy! I don't think I've ever had cleats last only half a season. I drag yeah, my toe a lot it. when I shoot. <laughs> okay, so you're fun. shooting a lot because you'll never say this, but <laughs> top goal score in the state, baby. Yeah, you're, t- you're too. Did humble. you know that? Yeah, you he's too humble. He's for nice. the top class, not all the classes. Still, it's the top <laughs> class <laughs> though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice. And you're also not playing, like, bullshit teams versus those other kids yeah. that are playing just terrible squads, I'm sure. There were some, like, technical – there were some weird schools that were in there. It was, like, random, like, technical schools or, I don't know, STEM schools. I, don't, I didn't know they were high schools that were like that. What, what's a STEM school? I was just said like, STEM high school. Mm. I don't know, look it up. But there's a couple, like, the really <laughs> small ones. It's like, I a trade know. school? Oh, uh, yeah. Probably. Um, it probably was. But it was a high school, I guess, that had students. I don't know. It was just different than what I normally saw from just, like, typical high schools like Francis Howe or Interesting. Uh, Liberty. Did you guys go to the same high school? Yeah. You too? Okay. So I would have been a senior whenever he was a freshman, and we got to play, like, our my senior season, his freshman season together. So that was that was cool to, like, be able to, like, bond with uh, – like, that was a cool bonding experience. I feel like we got, like, way closer after that. Yeah, uh, definitely. I never went to school with any of my family members. Oh, really? Mm-mm. I'm an only child, so. Oh, you know. oh okay. That so might be. Oh, oh, but even cousins or yeah, anything. Yeah, not not even cousins or anything. Yeah. There's me, him, Bailey, and I have another cousin that's down here in Molina. There's four yeah. of us. It's so pretty wild. Your whole, f- I mean, your all your siblings are here. Absolutely. It's pretty crazy. Dang. I've never gone to school with my youngest sister, and she's down here now. Oh, dang. So it's weird, but I, I still never see her. Yeah, I'm She's sure. like, like, I'm on my last semester, so I'm more like <laughs> chilled out, I guess you'd say. She's the opposite, I'm sure. She's figuring, like, her friend group out. She's, right, like, joined right, a sorority. Right. She's in, like, DECA. Like, she's yeah. she's figuring out her place down here. Yeah. Freshman year is definitely a lot different yeah. this year, I would say. For sure. Oh, yeah. She chills out a lot. Yeah. So I thought this year was going to be, like, the craziest year living in downtown. It's not. We're not, <laughs> not, we're not 21, so. Yeah, I, know, I don't know. I wonder if it picks up, because I, I probably calmed down after I turned 21. That's what I think is going to happen to me, too. I think the I first know. couple months I'm 21, I'll probably drink a little more, because I'll be able to use it. But after that, I think I'll probably slow down a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Go hard then, and then kind of mm-hmm. get burnt out, and you're like, well, it's not even fun anymore. It's legal. Yeah, yeah. Just once I get tired of having the option, then I won't yeah. do it as a. I guess I won't do it as often. Mm-hmm. Do you go out a lot? Yeah, I'd say a fair amount. I I go out in waves. Like I might go out Thursday. Like there there'll be times where I go out like three times in a week. But I I am not that kind of person. Like usually, right, right. and then the next week I'm like I'm not going out. I f- I do that too. Yeah. I feel, mm-hmm. like, I feel like that's what we do. Mm-hmm. I prefer it that way. You get, yeah. like, a balance, you know? <laughs> you can't be doing that all the time. <laughs> it yeah. becomes a problem. Well, because there's some weeks you're just not busy, so you're like, all right, well, well there's like well a go out. There's, like, events, too, or, like, homecoming or tailgates. Right. Like last tailgate this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Last ones this weekend. It's my last one ever. Yeah, I was about to say. Really? Your last At least one. as a student. As a student. I'm yeah. sure you'll be back. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Do you have plans for uh, uh, graduation yet? No. Just walk down the aisle. I guess. 
fuck yeah. I Actually, I'm borrowing a cap and gown. Pro tip, if you guys get the option, they're like fifty dollars. Really? Uh-huh. So I was, I was like, well, can I just borrow one? Like, I have a ton of friends that are graduated at this point. Like, why can't I just use one of theirs? So I'm just borrowing one from from a friend for the day, and then <laughs> not spending any money. He doesn't yeah, care. Because so. what's the point of you don't need it after that? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna go in a closet. You know why? Yeah. Like my parents offered to pay for it. I didn't. I didn't like. Uh, so it wasn't like negatively impacting me with like money or anything. Mm-hmm. My economics were completely cool. I just didn't want the college taking any more oh, money yeah. from us. Yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. principal, man. Like I, there's <laughs> no, a there's I a you. I can hack the system here. For real. This is one thing I have power over. Take yeah. every cent you can get. Yeah, right. They really do. <laughs> they have chilled out on the parking tickets, I will say. I've noticed. I've no I read an article that they it was some ridiculous number. Like in a year it was like a million dollars. They're getting investigated for it. Really? Yeah. It's definitely unethical. I think they were saying that they have uh, quotas, or they were suspected to have quotas, monthly quotas of tickets or something. I would not doubt it. Dude, there was so many tickets. A lot of tickets. Time. I have you guys got one? I haven't got a single one this year, and I haven't even had a parking pass. So, knock on wood. And you've been, you've been parking, like, illegally? Yeah. Like, at least illegally with, like, the mm-hmm. most date? Yeah, I just park in Bear Park South every day. You gotta have a pass to be in there. I haven't got one. It's nice. Hopefully those investigators stay on their shit, you know? They're probably listening right now. (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) They'll be coming for you. Hey, Missouri State, everything we say, Cliff Smart, we're talking to you right now. (laughs) Everything we say is completely hypothetical. We're just, we're just, we're just talking shit right now. Everything's hypothetical. I'd never do anything to hurt Cliff Smart. He knows that. (laughs) He knows. There is so much. So, if anybody listening doesn't know who Cliff Smart is, Cliff Smart is like the what is he the president? He's the president of Missouri State. Yeah. yeah. He has like this blind loyalty. Like everybody just loves him because They're he behind him for sure. He, like he makes like a goofy video on social media here and there, and then people are like, "Oh my god, he's so and funny!" And it's not his idea ever. I'm no sure. way. <laughs> no <laughs> way. He's not being there at all. He might not even be on it. He not. He might not even know those videos are being tweeted. <laughs> I bet he does. I bet he knows that much. <laughs> yeah, <he's just laughs> we should we should find we should get Cliff Smart like uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> get him on a podcast. Yeah, right. That'd be a good time. Or just do something like videotape him and do something like that would piss anybody off and just see him at his worst. <laughs> see if we can like get him. Ki- we'll like dress up as homeless people and see if we can get him to like beat the shit out of us or something. <laughs> Like, we'll pretend to mug him, and then he'll beat the shit out of us, and then all we'll show is him beating yeah, the shit out of us. Video, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I tried to take a picture with Cliff Smart, and he beat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> People would probably still cheer for him. They'd just be like, let's um, go, Cliff. Yeah. You're my favorite. You're a badass, too. <laughs> You're a badass. There's definitely a loyalty for him. Everybody likes him, I feel like. But I don't sure. know why. Yeah, like, I, I feel like they like him, but him. they don't know why they like him. I can't yeah, tell I feel you that. I, I, agree. I don't have a reason not to like him, I guess. I yes, guarantee you what it is 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 some young people seeing his role of, like, the the old guy. So they, they make, like, dad jokes, I and then that. he just, like, plays with them, and, like, he's, like, spunky with it, and he's, like, playful and fun. And then easy people love guy. him for it. Just easy going. Yeah, yeah right. doesn't do anything that makes me upset, so I have no problem to worry about it. Or no reason to worry about it. I literally know nothing about him. I just know his name's Cliff Smart, and I know he's old. <laughs> yeah. It's an old white yeah. dude named Cliff Smart. That's all I know. It's pretty. It's about as white as a name as you could get. Cliff Smart. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to. I'm trying to imagine like a another race, like a like a real dark black dude, and then his yearbook photo, and underneath says Cliff Smart, and I just can't <laughs> picture it. Nope. <laughs> Not Cliff. <laughs> It's <laughs> funny. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's a lot of people like that that people just love. We don't know why. You know what about that? Kanye? Like I love Kanye and his I love Kanye's music and I think he I've he said some genius shit, but I feel like people love him like way more than I understand. I love Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> why do you love Kanye then? Um, well, I mean, first and foremost is music for sure. And then his producing he's one of the best producers of all time i think because he was a producer before he was a rapper um with jay-z he made a lot of jay-z's beats and stuff i would agree with you there he might be the number one producer him and pharrell 
for sure. Pharrell's a really good producer. What uh, what songs has he like been involved with? He he just has a really he he was like one of the actually you know who's the best producer is Rick Rubin. He's the one who started Def Jam. He was one of the first. Yeah, I'm not sure. About it. I mean, I th- he was like the before. he was like the one of the first big producers in hip hop. Like he worked with like the Beastie Boys and stuff like that, and really? he like he still works with people. Like he produced Yeezus, Kanye's album Yeezus. <laughs> He's responsible for like a lot of rap groups. And st- he started Def Jam, the label Def Jam, from his dorm. I've definitely heard of that. Yeah, from his dorm room. Yeah, and at NYU. At NYU. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. He's like one of the first n- names in hip hop, really. And he's just this old white dude. Wow. That's cool. I was t- I was not expecting that either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> old white Rick dude. Rubin. I guess that d- that does sound that sounds white. I you guess. would like him. He's a super like uh, spiritual like guy. I don't know how to describe him. Interesting. Almost like a almost like a hippie sort of. Interesting. But mm-hmm. he's like produces rap albums. It's cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'll have to look into him. I'll have to look into him. Yeah. Yeah. It's tight. Yeah, I um I feel like why I like Kanye is just good music and then do you think it's the ego? Like something about the people with that big of an ego cuz he's kind of a controversial person. Yeah. I if if you listen, I don't know. If you really listen to a lot of the stuff he says, I actually agree with a lot of it but he like he did an interview with um i, I forget who it was but it, you know when that album just came out uh what's the name of the album that he just dropped <laughs> the <laughs> christian one the yeah i feel like such a fake fan right now <laughs> i'm just blanking on it um jesus is king jesus is yeah king. jesus is king just dropped so he did an interview like a hour-long interview with uh it's like big boy tv just this guy who interviews rappers and stuff. And he was talking about um he was talking he he was talking a lot about uh like how he's trying to lead other rappers like on the right path cuz what a lot of rappers do, you know, is just get rich, you know, buy a lot of chains and spend their money like unwisely and stuff. And like he was talking about like how he just like purchased 4,000 acres in Montana and stuff. And it's, I don't know, he's just on a different wave than a lot of people. Yeah, doing his thing. What's he, what's he using that land for? Uh, he just, like, owns a ranch. He's just, like, he wants to build, I think he tr- wants to build, like, an amphitheater and stuff. But he, right, he just owns, like, a bunch of ranches and just, like, has these animals, animals and stuff. Really? Yeah. Dude, he's on a way different That's where he made, thing. what was that album? Jesus, uh, 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 the last album he put out. It's the yeah. Jesus is King? No, one the that. one before that. It's uh, Life of Pablo? No, no. it's Yay. Yeah. Yeah, it? yeah, Yay. The album Yay. That was in, um, was it Mon- It was in one of his ranches that he owns in the mountains. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. They just flew out there, so they had their own place. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's telling people, like, move out to the Midwest with yeah. this bunch of land. Like, mm-hmm. That was something that he could talked about, but there's a lot more to it. But it's kind of hard to. I'm doing a really bad job of explaining his ideology, but he's a very dynamic person. Yeah. So he was talking about a lot of things that he's very passionate about. It's hard to put it all into words because I'm not as passionate about it as he was, or yeah, pay as much attention. He was talking about the the Trump, the Trump hat too. That's uh, what he was yeah. talking. That's what started the whole conversation. Because you know when people got mad at him for wearing the the Trump hat. Yeah, absolutely. The Make America Great Again hat. He was just, what was he saying? He was just mad. Oh, that he had he had this story where like, he would wear like the Make America Great Again hat, and he would be in like the cities, on like one of the coasts, and people would just be like screaming at him. Like he specifically, I think he said liberals or left people, and he said like, oh, they'd be screaming at him like, you know, screw Kanye, I hate like hate Kanye. Then he come out to the Midwest, and people would be complimenting him like thanking him for what he's doing and it, I think that impacted him and made him want to move out to the Midwest because he thinks it's better. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Where we're from. Something he was also saying that it's just kind of bullshit that just because he's black he's not allowed to ha- wear a Make yeah. America Great Again hat. Have his opinion. He wanted like, everybody to have their own opinion. 
No, I've, yeah, about that's. It. I think Isn't it was that like kind of a form of racism. Exactly. That's what you know. You're it's saying. like almost a form of political oppression. Like what, would you, what would you call that? That's the whole. That's the whole thing. That's his whole point. As I, I, I think he does agree with some of the stuff Trump's saying, but I think it's more about just because I'm black doesn't mean I can't wear this, and you shouldn't be limited to vote this way because you're black or because you're white. Respect. Yeah, I respect yeah. that message. That's, so that, that's the reason I like him too. I agree with that. But I'm gonna blow my nose real quick. For sure. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, currently doing this with a very mild cold, but MJ played with the blue. <laughs> yeah, I was about so. to say that. <laughs> the game. That's funny. Have to grab a drink while I'm getting up. Oh yeah. Do you guys want another one? Yeah, that would be great. Sure. Appreciate it. Thank you. No, it's hard to articulate. Kanye's beliefs for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Like I I picked up, I picked up the one, and I was like, and then it just seemed heavier than the second one. I don't, I don't know why. Interesting. (laughs) I was talking to one of my friends the other day, and he won't blow his nose in front of people. Wait, say that again. My one of my friends won't blow his nose in front of people. Really? Yeah. Why is that? He thinks it's like st- I don't know. He makes himself. It's shame, bro. Shame won't oh, blow really? his nose in front of people. Yeah. Dude, I found out that uh, Tonk, my little, is yeah. definitely afraid of pine cones. People leave <laughs> pine cones around him. That's weird. Apparently, weirder, freaks then. out, dude. Like, I guess they put one in his room the other day. Jay got one from where I work at. They have like the it's like a Kirkland's. They have like all those Christmas decorations out, and they had this huge pine cone they put on his bed. You could like you went outside, threw it outside, stomped on it. Something like I don't know. It's did pine did he like cut his finger uh, when he was younger? Like some traumatic uh, event? Or I didn't get more of a story besides that, but I wish probably he doesn't did. want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna text him. Something it. bad must have happened. You don't just hate a pine cone for no reason. <laughs> did he right. could, like try to stick it up his ass when he was younger or something? And because that that seems like something if you try uh, to put a would pine cone trauma. up your butt, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're penetrating somebody with a pine cone, putting it up there probably it would probably hurt, but pulling it out that would hurt. Yeah. Because then it's getting like all those are just getting lounged into you. Yeah. That must ways, that dude. that must be it. He put a pine <laughs> cone up his goddamn butt. What was he doing? Probably fell off the tree. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> <laughs> put it in a chair next time. See see how he responds to that oh. right before he sits down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <start> dude. Going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy i used to have a very irrational fear i had this like up until probably like two years ago now i'm cool around it but tape measures like whenever they're all the way out i had a fear of cutting my finger on the side of a tape measure like whenever so like say say i was gonna have the the tape measure here let's say this beer is like the actual like tape measure i pull it out i would be scared to death of Letting it go and then letting it like slit my finger because it's so like fine that there. Hurt, yeah, that would definitely hurt. And I was like scared to death of them, and especially whenever paper. people would pull them like all the way out and throw them, you just, know, like, back and start backing away. It's yeah. loud as hell too. This, like when people throw them out there when it's all riled up, it's super loud. No, I'm scared. <laughs> You're scared it's of paper cuts? Yeah, I I don't like oh, I don't like that the idea feeling, of like a paper what? cut at all. Paper, oh paper, yeah. yeah, it stings. It's a weird feeling having something just slide through your finger. I used to be <laughs> super scared of heights. Mm. Heights still Heights, yeah. Up. See, that's a rational fear, though. Yeah. It's reasonable. Depends on how high you are. That's a good point. It w- well, yeah. It was. I don't know. I was pretty, yeah. Even, like, Would you even jump like getting a on a ladder uh, A ladder was kind of fucking scary. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Not, I think I kind of grew up. Have you ever seen a pro yeah. on a ladder? Like, somebody that will literally hop? Like, it's instead dude. of getting it all, yeah. like, walking down from the ladder and moving it, like, a few inches over or a few feet over, they will hop. They will literally hop. Like, people that are really good with ladders, it is, it's, it's like. quite a risk. That's, that's probably my biggest fear is watching a pro on a ladder. If you're good at, if you can do it, though, that would save so much time, especially on a long-ass ladder. True. Just flying around. All the way down. People that are crazy, the people that work on those electric boxes on the fire po- or the wood poles in the streets. Oh, the phone, pho- like the phone, <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. phone lines. You see those things like blow up, like the, they're crazy. Yeah. If your hand touches it or whatever, like you're, it's a, you're AJ Gonzo. It's game over. Mm. Yeah. Does that ha- is that common? 
I hope I don't think I don't know. Kind I'm of sure is. it's pretty easy to like fuck it up yeah. and make it that happen. Probably. Have you ever seen videos of people like climbing up poles and grabbing on it, and it'll like explode, and they'll just drop like they pass out, and they just drop like off the top of the foam pole. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were watching. Um, I've never seen those before. What it's were the? F- was it the videos from Oktoberfest that we were watching, where people were doing just crazy shit? Oh, he was climbing on a wire. I yeah. Think. He was just, uh, like, everybody there is blacked out, hammered, you know. And this dude's, like, it was in a big tent, and there was two, like, huge poles, and there was wires connecting them. He climbed up to the top of the pole and started, like, walking across the wires on top and fell off. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, 15 feet in the It air. was, like, a thread of tweets of videos from Oktoberfest in Germany. Uh-huh. These, it was, it was, like, Mardi Gras, but it looked, like, like, times, like, five. They had blow just on the tables, just out. Yeah, it was, it was just like nothing. Yeah, it was <laughs> nuts. Looked like everybody was there nuts. was just blacked out. And everybody was just doing. It was people of all ages, it was everybody. <laughs> everybody. Was it black. looked like a universal thing. I've heard <laughs> Europe goes hard. I've heard they party <laughs> crazy yeah, hard. That's did. that's wild. Yeah. I've never seen videos of Oktoberfest. Like, obviously, you hear had. about it. You know, first, it's like yeah. I'd highly recommend watching some. Dude, it was Very super... F- I th- they, they got removed from Twitter. I had to Google. They were that fucked up. Like, really? they were going crazy, crazy. It was people, like, girls just whipping their titties. Dudes, like, fingering girls, like, at the bar and shit. It was crazy. I saw a video of a dude do a l- <laughs> doing a line off another dude's penis. Just, like, pulled it out. He's <laughs> like, hey, bro, like, come, come over here. Pulled it out. Put a line on there and then did it. The wild thing is they're probably completely heter- heterosexual. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. Just, that's crazy. That, like, just for like the <laughs> they were like, just so some form up. of thrill. They were just so fucked up. Yeah, they're fucked Humor. up. They're that's crazy. Up. That's crazy. I haven't. I want to go to Europe. Not necessarily to do that, but yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I want to go just so just so it's like cool to like snort off my friends' dicks. Like, j- just for that. Everyone looks at me weird when I try to do that. <laughs> Kusha's <laughs> older brother lives in Germany, but he goes Oktoberfest I think every year. Right. But he's like he's. Mid thirties, maybe, maybe early thirties. So I totally like thought Kusha was an only child. He's got a brother. He's got like a half brother and a half sister. I think. You're really? His whole family's engineers. Everybody. Yeah, all of them. But his sister's like twenty-seven, I think. Twenty-eight, and his brother's like thirty-two, maybe thirty-two. I hope Kusha doesn't hear me saying this, but I feel like Kusha is the kind of guy that his sister would have a big butt. Yeah, I bet she'd probably be hot. I don't know. I know. Like <laughs> she seems like it seems like she might be hot. It's funny because he's the hairiest guy ever. We're saying this, but he doesn't post pictures with her. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> good point. Indicator, indicator. <laughs> and I, I could say that because people used to make fun of me because my sister had a big butt in high school. So you can like, say I, that because you're bigger than Kusha. I can't say that. You should <laughs> be my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you should be my ass anyways. Yeah. <laughs> he's a hairy guy too. Yeah, I'm, I, I've shit, always dude. had like very hairy arms for whatever reason. It's unbelievable. He just looks like he's got a. <laughs> that's hilarious so Kusha if you're listening your sister's hot I'm sure <laughs> we're calling it right now <laughs> I had an old roommate they used to and he actually posted a picture with his sister like very recently but he used to be like bro like my sister's pretty like, I, my sister's pretty like but like it wasn't like like my sister's beautiful like you talk about your mom being beautiful your grandma being beautiful it was like like I have a hot sister, man. Yeah, but you don't have to. Even if you were saying, "Yeah, I'm a, she's like she's so beautiful," you just only got to say it once. Exactly. Like every time you bring up your sister, you don't got to comment on her. It looks. was it was a really <laughs> bizarre exaggeration. I'm like, how beautiful do you think? Are you are you <laughs> trying to make a move? Are you like, should I anticipate something or? Do I want to be friends with you? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna lock my door from here on out every night. <laughs> I had some, oh, oh, I'm actually, I, I'm going to Europe. Like, that's, like, my mm-hmm. post-grad big oh, deal, really? which Mason knows this already, yeah. but. Big deal um, th- cool. So those friends that you just met upstairs, uh-huh. all of them besides, like, the tallest guy, like, the taller, yeah, yeah. linkier guy. Yeah. Uh, his name's Brett, but he, uh, all of them are going to Europe. And then one girl, one guy, or two more girls and one guy as well. So it'd be, like, from, I'm pretty much doing, like, the UK, Iceland, with Ooh, me Iceland. and the second girl that walked in, the brunette. Uh-huh. And then we're meeting up with this other girl. And it's like a loose plan. And like probably like down in Portugal somewhere. 
and then we're going with the rest of the group from like Portugal, Madrid, Barcelona. I personally am probably going to skip France because everybody tells me that people in France are assholes. Uh, dude, that's <laughs> what I've heard too. I don't know why that is. Why is that? Um, I don't know. Really? It might be. It, it could just. It could be as much as our fault as their fault. For all we know, we're sure. probably you assholes know. too. Yeah, America. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> maybe, maybe they're the only country that's like, you know what? We're not putting up with their bullshit anymore. Fuck Good you point. Guys. I I love that. I love that perspective because I'm. Yeah. I don't. I've just been told to skip it. Like literally, oh, to I've, skip I've it by like thing. multiple my aunt, people. My yeah, aunt went there and I think had a similar experience. I think there's an actual syndrome that people talk about that when people go to Paris and then it's not nearly as nice as they think it is, they like have like a panic really? attack. They freak out. I'm really. Sure is there it's it's like, like kind of poor or poverty or it's dirty is what dirty. I heard. I mean, I've never been Dude, there. I'm, so. sh- I'm sure that reminds me of this quote I heard once and it's what is it? Reality equals happiness minus expectations. You know, it's like kind of the concept. It's kind of playing along the concept of you have a such high expectations because yeah, like say. it's Paris. Oh, my God, the Eiffel yeah. Tower. Yeah. And then you get there and you're like, this is all right. This is okay. That assumes that your expectations are always high, though. True. True. <laughs> at least for at least for Paris. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you just meant in general. Yeah, oh, know. true, yeah. true. <laughs> well, like in general, like um, like so, like if you if you pretty much what that's implying is if you have no expectations, you'll be happy. Oh. Okay. Like reality, like reality is happiness, which I'm not saying I, like fully agree with this, but I think there's some truth in it. Reality equals happiness, so like minus expectations. So pretty much the expectations take away from that like joy of life. Okay. At least that's my understanding just, of it. I feel it. like you're just disappointed when things don't happen that you want to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that just takes away from the happiness. Mm-hmm. Of just enjoying what's going on in the first place. Yeah. That's why I hear a lot of the coolest places in Europe like going off of that – are the small towns and it's probably because people have such low expectations that they get there and they're like the people are genuine the food's good um i don't know maybe they party hard they have some really cool yeah. cultural things i bet a lot of like the bigger cities like paris and stuff are probably gotten kind of so much tourism that they're not as cool as they used to be you know absolutely yeah it's overhyped kind of lose a bit of its like coolness when it's just a bunch of people that really don't Aren't from there, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why I'm like I'm not even looking forward. The only big city I'm really looking forward to is probably Barcelona and Amsterdam. Those are like the this two. Amsterdam will be cool. Like probably a few places in Italy as well. Dude, I mean Barcelona, dude. I feel like those places are more unique though than other. I guess I mean Paris is a city, but Barcelona, like you just the way it looks, <coughs> such as like a regular city. I guess I don't know just what pictures I've seen of it, but. Also, like Italy, they have Rome stuff, and I don't know, there's just different aspects to it that I think are more interesting. One hundred percent. Do you it, have like it? Does it seem it Barcelona seems like one of the most, u- like probably the most unique like big city. Culturally, Spain's at least that's like my that. expectation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Going back to that, <laughs> yeah. dude. If you could catch a soccer game there, that'd be cool. I was. <laughs> we were gonna go to. We're going. I think we're gonna end up in going to Iceland instead. But Barcelona plays their very last, and I'm like a big Barca fan. Right. So Barcelona plays their very last game of the season on May 24th, and I was hoping to like catch that La Liga game, which would be so cool. Especially if like th- if they're still playing at that point, they'd be like in the Champions League at least semifinal, I so guess. Say, if you're gonna be there for June 2nd, you know, work a couple extra shifts, you could get a Champions League ticket and go to the final. <sighs> that'd be insane. <laughs> that'd be insane. Be game changer, Dude, that'd be. It wouldn't time. matter what your expectations were for that. You'd be happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's peak tourism right there. I would have been disappointed with the last, the last Champions League with Liverpool and Tottenham. I don't. I wouldn't have been super happy if I paid for that. Well, you want a, two teams from a different leagues, ideally yeah. at least. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. See that game two times a year. Yeah. I don't or even three or four times they play each other in league or like the cup plays. That's true. I need to watch more soccer. I don't really. Mm-hmm. It's on a perfect time in the morning when I wake up. You know, catch the the late games or the best games are like ten thirty and eleven thirty, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. In the morning, so it's easy to wake up and turn that on. So not this Saturday. They'll be on this Saturday. 
put the tailgate this Saturday. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's on when, when we get, if I get up at six, it'll be on. If I get up at seven, it'll still be like it's on from six to probably twelve thirty. Nice. Like okay. Just not as like higher quality teams. If there are some good teams playing, we should watch it the Saturday after Thanksgiving. All right, that's fine. Me, I'll look it up. Loose plan, rough plan. Might be a big game <laughs> this weekend. I think Chelsea and Man City might be playing on Sunday or Saturday. No, oh, very cool. Do you have Do you have a team besides Barcelona, like in the Premier League? Or? I used to like Man U, but I hate the way they run their team <laughs> now. Really I I have not liked the way Man U has been like the past five years. So you're talking about next weekend? I'm very loose in the EPL. I I don't hate any teams. Like just because I like Barca doesn't mean I hate Real Madrid. Just because I like Messi oh, okay. doesn't mean I like or I hate Ronaldo. Like I think you shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, right. I I definitely prefer Messi, but no reason to hate Ronaldo. Yeah, right. Like he's incredible. Some he's years he's incredible. better. Than, some years he's better than Messi. One hundred percent. It's no reason no. not to watch talent. Dude, that's yeah. <laughs> that's what a lot of people always say. You should just appreciate both of them. There are a lot of good players I hate though, just in general in sports, I guess. Trying to who, who's somebody in soccer or just generally anybody in um, sports that you hate. Draymond Green. I, I don't like Draymond Green at all. Why is that? Mm. I was I didn't like the Warriors at all, and then I feel like he's he got so popular just because the Warriors were good, but he was like the fifth or sixth best player on the team, and he acted like he was like really good, and now they're like they're like the worst team in the league. So yeah, they have three players out now. Yeah. I just learned this the other night. That is mind blowing. The top like three players. Things I have think. changed a lot. Yeah. That's <laughs> insane. It's wide open now. Gates floodgates are open. It's op- It's pretty much open to anybody. I, I, mean, heard, I don't know basketball very well. I yeah. heard LeBron is made a one billion dollar lifetime Deal contract. And I heard the same for Ronaldo. I'm sure they probably got Ronaldo a lot because he's been on there forever. It's insane. I didn't know that, dude. I should tell him the thing about a billion that we were talking. <laughs> oh about. yeah. Yeah, you're gonna shit your pants. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I already did <laughs> <laughs> again, but. So I saw, I think it was a, it was a clip from Joe Rogan or something. I don't know what the context was, but this guy said that um, one million seconds is equal to eleven days, but one billion seconds is thirty-one years. Wow, <laughs> that is that is kind of mind blowing. Honestly, yeah, that's how gap. that's how much bigger a billion is than a million. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I always knew it, but obviously a billion was a lot more, but like 31 years to 11 days, like that's a big difference. That really number. puts it in perspective. Yeah, Maybe you put it in time. Subjective perspective. Subjective perspective. <laughs> you know the name. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love it. No, it's crazy though. Because whenever you see somebody that's a millionaire, you're like, that's kind of the point where you're like, that person's definitely rich. Billion but then dollars, billionaire, dude. like think about that's that. That's how much difference Billionaire. hundred that's how billion much. dollars. <laughs> Could you even imagine having a billion dollars? Well, <laughs> what's the, what's what did Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos were like seventy? His no, I I saw it today. His net worth was one hundred and ten billion dollars. One hundred and ten. <laughs> Is that after the divorce? No, no, no. Oh, or sorry, sorry. That was Bill Gates. Jeff Bezos was like one hundred and seven or one hundred and eight point seven. Oh something yeah, I like forgot. Is he divorce. only lower because of the divorce? I think mm-hmm. that dropped him yeah. quite a bit though. Yeah. But his wife has said she didn't have to do. I mean, she probably was still worse. Even if she it, took. Imagine if she took not even half. If she took five hundred million, like a fraction of a percentage, she took she could one still percent. be set. She took one percent. She still have a billion dollars, and that is more than enough. That's insane. <laughs> well, I guess. Well, I don't know. I guess I was gonna say she might not get that much, but I, even if it's like assets too, like she might get a house or a boat or you know, not necessarily a billion something dollars worth in cash. A lot. Yeah, yeah. Something worth a lot she of probably money. just got a bunch of shit. So much shit. If I had Jeff Bezos on this podcast, I'd have a lot of questions, but I think the starting topic would be a prenup. Dude. (laughs) (laughs) See, they wouldn't even, the girl wouldn't even be able to get mad at you for that, for asking you to, her to sign one at that point, right? (laughs) And it, like, she's up to something. She's up to something if she's angry. Yeah. Like, somebody you didn't know before you were rich, there's no reason not to at least be careful. Fantastic point. That's true. I could see if it was like high school sweetheart and Jeff Bezos was like, "All right, sign this shit." Like, <laughs> she might get a little bit hurt, but her it was probably not that. Yeah, it's probably just some so. lady. Could you imagine being so rich that say you're rich and single, 
and then you have to take on the burden of hiding that you're rich. Like, at least that's that would definitely be my approach. Like, if I was, like, stupid rich. Just don't flex it. Yeah, like, I would literally try to hide the fact that I'm, like, incredibly wealthy. Because mm-hmm. why would you want a girl knowing that? Because then it's like, oh, she likes me for my money. Like, I would, I would indicate that, like, I'm doing all right, but yeah. I would. Just to, enough to get catch, some attention. Catch attention. Yeah, 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 exactly. Dress yourself properly and. One hundred percent. Drive a night, drive a decent car. One hundred percent. Yeah, you don't need a Rolex or something though. Mm-hmm. I feel you. Get some chains. <laughs> <laughs> you, would you be one to get get like jewelry and stuff? You think or no? What do you think, Mason? Do you uh, think I, I would? Oh, you. I could maybe see you with the ring or something, but I don't think it would. I don't think you'd get much. Would you maybe see. a tat or something. I wouldn't get any piercings. No, would you? Get I'd like agree. Maybe maybe a tattoo and then. Yeah, or maybe a, like a ring if it really like if yeah. it had some like sentiment and then maybe a decent watch. Something. If you were like rich though, would you get like a lot of like jewelry, or no? I don't think so. I really no. don't think Is so. You? I don't. I mean, no. I mean, I don't maybe. I, don't I mean, I wear a watch, but other than that, I don't. Because that's what a lot of people do with their money. So I think it's just the waist for something you wear on your neck. I don't know. You can get nice clothes, but it's just a chain. It doesn't do anything for you besides looks. Weigh you down. That's what I always think about too. It can't be comfortable. Having. There's no way. It looks. I get. It looks cool on a lot of people, but it can't be comfortable at all. I would. I would really want. I would. I would like to think that I would be the same person that I am after making the money, and that the money would only make me. More interesting, more of who I want to be, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. more. I would use it more towards like freedoms than like the aesthetic or the appeal or like coming yeah. off as flashy. Yeah. Those are like the type of celebrities I look up to for sure. Yeah, I agree. That's why I like Joe Rogan that so dude, much. He's, like he's, he's the epitome of that for sure. One hundred percent. But I don't know. That's you can, I think we it. could still be like that without without money, maybe. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's just it's really cool because like. I've just never had that perspective, so it's hard to even like answer this question because it's. Yeah. I've never uh, had like I've never had, had a million dollars in a bank and like yeah. looked at it and be like, "What do I want to do with this?" <laughs> yeah, I've never I've never <laughs> had so that. Options. Yeah, right. And yeah. right now, where I'm at in life, I think I'd spend it on travel. Like I'd I'd take some like significant time out of my life and travel like somewhat frugally, somewhat luxuriously, and yeah. and just try to enjoy myself. But. Ten years from now, that my answer would probably be very different. So I don't know. Yeah, for sure. What do you think? Especially what would you do? You'd probably travel. Go, travel. To, go to soccer games. That's probably what I would do. Is go to a couple mm-hmm. soccer games. It'd probably be easier to decide right now what to do with it than in like ten years for real. Well, the thing is, when you have all that money, you don't have to do one thing either. Like you can do whatever you want with all that money. Mm-hmm. We were talking today about a. You know the fields of Missouri State. They're named like the what Betty and Bobby Allison, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, our, my one of my friends was telling me about how like Bobby Allison made his money, and he basically somehow found a way, like a super efficient way of extracting protein to put into like for dog food, and uh, Purina, and he patented it and uh, patented it, and Purina pays him like two million dollars a month to use the patent to make their dog food. That's wild. So he just sits there and collects t- like two million bucks a month, not doing anything. A month. I'm a sure month, there's other yeah. companies that use it too. So he's probably making oh, a lot more. Oh, for sure. Than that. Like yeah, and uh, he just like he just bought this private jet, and he's got a. It's called a Bad Bob Airlines. <laughs> he's got a Playboy bunny on the side of it. Really? Yeah, it's fucking sick. What does Betty think of this? have not talked to her but i'm sure she doesn't <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure she doesn't like it <laughs> <laughs> what is that outside of betty and bobby allison fields i, I know what you're talking about i've seen it before i've seen it on campus i just can't think of what it is it might be the taco bell field it's yeah 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 oh it is i think it's the talk ta- dude i think it's the taco bell fields and the track field and the soccer like the track and soccer field too. do you think he's mad that we we still call it the taco bell fields probably yeah probably even, probably doesn't even know hey shout out uh I'll I'll live on your reputation, man. Just for the next next two weeks, I'm here. I'll start calling it. Hey, man, you want to go hit the Betty and Betty and Bobby Allison Fields? <laughs> no one's gonna hang out. With <laughs> just fuck off. Who fuck are you, off, man? <laughs> Let's just go to T Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really far away. Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm not driving. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah, that is true. Fuck, you live hella close to campus. It's a nice. You walk to your classes and shit, probably. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's very nice. I've had that luxury the entire time I've lived here. Like literally the entire time. It's nice. Yeah. Dorms, frat house was right off camp, right off uh, across the street from National, and then furthest I lived was like Bear Village, pretty much. Like right there, like Beacon Bear Village. I had to drive so this year. It's been different. It's not as bad as I thought, though. I thought it was going to be a real pain in the ass, honestly. Well, it hasn't really been that cold yet, either. That's, That's true. We've got to start scraping the cars. So it'll probably be a little different. Great point. <laughs> yeah. We won't have much of that, though. Cause, like, we don't have much of the semester, and it's not been bad. Like, weather-wise... Dude, it was nice as shit out the past couple days. It's really nice. Dude, I'm kind of a fan of global warming. I don't know about <laughs> you guys. You guys need to stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Doing right. fine. Well, Keep it up, people. Global <laughs> warming my ass. <laughs> we'll all get a little tanner. It's okay. It's <laughs> it's I don't think it works like that. But yeah. <laughs> it's not how it works. Sarcasm, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I had something I was thinking about earlier. I can't think of what it was, though. Nah, whatever. Fuck it. Oh, well, it'll come up eventually. What would you guys do with a billion dollars? On a real note, like, seriously, what would you do with a billion dollars? You might first. I might buy a soccer team. You're I right. like that. Damn. A small little <laughs> club. Probably like you'd you'd start making investments. Yeah. Ooh, that, that would be an that, I mean that's an investment of, of sorts, yeah. Buying a buying a team. I think that'd be lit. You could at least like be a pretty like a majority owner of a team, like Chelsea or Yeah. Throw it. I mean if you try to give Chelsea like two hundred, three hundred million dollars, I'm sure they would take it. Cool let you make way. some decisions. Getting some de- decisions, go to all the games, you know, meet the players, all this stuff would be cool. And then you, s- I mean, basically get a salary. Yeah, maybe you get money from it. Maybe I just do that. It'd be cool if you had like cool. enough <laughs> money too. Like, I don't know. Say, say you find somebody like Mbappe. You know, he just came around. Like, say, say he's on a, whatever the team is. And you think this guy's gonna be like in the next big player, mm-hmm. or you find Neymar when he's young, or Messi when he's young. And you end up buying him, like with your own money, you know, just just to have him on your squad, like that. That'd be cool too. Like yeah, having contract know. negotiations with Lionel Messi. That would be wild, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Owning a, I would love to own a soccer team. That'd be awesome. That'd be interesting. I don't know what I would do with a billion dollars though. A billion's a lot. Like you could start saying private islands. I feel dude, like you'd have be a couple million. Either, you'd have to spend some of it probably to figure out what you wanted to do. I, I would know? just do all the small That's stuff that I've always yeah. wanted to do that wouldn't put it Because, like, there. yeah. Because traveling yeah. probably wouldn't really it's do only last so long, it. right? Yeah. You, I mean, it'd probably be hard to spend a million dollars traveling. That's what I've. That's if you're living reasonably, yeah. you know, like living how I probably would try to live if I was there. Yeah, I feel like. I'm, uh, yeah, I agree. I feel like I would. I'm just trained not to blow money like that, so I don't. Yeah, right. A mo- even a million would last a lo- would probably last a long time, right? Even if you were like bowling out to your standards, you know. Dude, ball- bowling out to my standards, I'm going to boogie and spending like thirty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> having a good ass night. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to spend some of it to figure it out. I feel like at that point, if you have that much money, you almost have like an ethical obligation to invest into something that's going to help the overall population of humanity, or just just humanity as a whole. You can, you could probably do that and make money as yeah, well. Yeah, right. For sure. We were talking about that in marketing today. Really? Like the different levels of uh, like being responsible. It's like corporate uh, public responsibility or something like that. Like making money is the lowest, being uh, following the laws like the h- second highest, being ethical is the third highest, and being like philanthropic is the highest. Respect, sure. okay. Yeah, which is kind of interesting because they put making money at the very, <laughs> the very first thing before anything else, before you follow the law or anything else, make money. <laughs> That's what it states. Interesting. I wonder why that is. Like why those know. two aren't flip flopped. I don't know. At least gives you a purpose, I guess. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a job, but it means you're doing something, you know. Mm-hmm. You're something, doing something to get productive, by. Yeah. It's kind of like make a living. Yeah. Make a living. Exactly. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter what you're doing. But, yeah, at that p- with a billion dollars, yeah, I guess you should. 
you should give some of it to somebody or invest in something. A lot of people. It's like, what are you gonna like? What is the biggest problem like that facing us right now? You know, it's a hard question to answer. A lot of options you could do. It's like you you could almost piss somebody off by putting it towards the wrong thing. You (laughs) know, (laughs) find some people don't like. Give like a hundred million dollars to some shit people don't like, and you're like, oh god damn it. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I know. (laughs) Something. I mean, if you gave money to the Republican Party because yeah. you thought it was the right thing to do, you're you going to piss off shamed, half the country. Exactly, yeah. I don't know. What would you do with a billion dollars? I don't know. I don't know. I would definitely... I don't know, if, I don't know what I would do with $100,000. If you Actually, <laughs> I don't know. I would figure it out. But still, off the top of my head, I don't know what I would do with $100,000. Just a, I think I'd create a pie chart, like a rough pie chart... <laughs> Of what you like, what what to spend on this, what to spend on this, what what to, like maybe some investments to help not just me but my next generation if I decide to have kids. Yeah, um, you can make your family rich for the rest of your life by investing that money. Literally, one hundred percent. Just be crazy. Which could end up being a bad thing, and then you start thinking about that. You're like, do I want to just hand this off to them, or do I want to give this to somebody else? Because then they're going to feel entitled the rest of their lives. I think that's what – I don't know. I'm sure De- Bill Gates is donating a little bit, but I'm pretty sure he's donating most of his money to charity when he passes away. Like, I don't think he's giving most of it to his kids. I feel like I've heard that as well. Like, it may, maybe a little bit. I think Warren Buffett said something about the same. Uh, that might have been Warren Buffett, too, that maybe I heard about they're homies. Yeah. They're like this. I w- at least Makes I always sense. see them like in the media together. They probably like hang out at the same places just coincidentally. Just right. Places rich people hang same out. Vibe. <laughs> That's a weird thing is like your how much money you have in your bank account probably influences who you hang out with like a lot. I've noticed the way you look influences who you hang out with a lot. That's a good point. It's you seek weird. out people that look like you a lot Dude, more. Dude, if you like look around in public, like there's groups of similar people just walking around together. It's crazy. Sure. Like <laughs> they say that in a partner too. Like, have you ever seen gr- like partners that look like siblings? Dude, my my mom and my dad like don't look that far apart. Like, I look exactly like both of them. That explains so much yeah. about you. <laughs> I I just <laughs> 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 <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> connect to the dad. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Every I feel like people hang out with people they look like too. It's weird. I agree. Right. Money for sure, though. Is it all the question if I go to the bathroom real quick? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Right. I, think, I think you meant, like, a question before you go to the bathroom. No, no. You didn't wear a diaper? Yeah. <laughs> I already shit my pants. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Billion dollars. That's just such a hard question to answer. Mm-hmm. It's just so hard to answer because you can't even imagine having it, and then it's like, once you had it, what would you do with it? Yeah. Because yeah, having it versus, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, speculating on having it is very different. That's true. That's that's true. I can't even imagine possessing it. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what I would do with it. Like, I couldn't <laughs> even imagine going to Taco Bell and spending. Uh, like which, by the way, I started eating there this summer for, like, the first time ever. Like, oh consistently. Yeah. And getting something that's not on the dollar menu. Mm-hmm. Like, Dude, if you get, like, a quesarito or something. Maybe you have a quesarito. Are those the. Bell. They're, like, $4. They, it's like a, they're, like, wrapped up. With cheat, yeah. Yeah, like those are good. Cheese with yeah, it's with and then a burrito, and so yeah, it's gas. I think I, yeah, yeah, those are good. That's good. But yeah, yeah. Even spending I like, like fifty bucks at Taco Bell, can't imagine that. <laughs> like you go there for the first time, you're like, okay, I'm full. <laughs> now what do I do? Yeah, I don't know. It's a lot of money. I'm sure they. I'm sure like Jeff Bezos doesn't know what to do with all the money that he has right now. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, I feel like you would really need some time to think on that question of what to do with it. And you need you need feedback of people that like genuinely have your best interest in mind. That's yeah, that's true. People tend to do the opposite. You make more money and people who have not your best interest come around. Yeah, good point. <laughs> I would definitely have, that's that's a thing. I'd be um, scared of that. Like going back to the girl, I feel like you were yeah, like yeah. stupid rich. I would I would be hiding the fact that I was rich because of that, it's like I, I just would hate the idea of being used because of something I have versus, like, who I am. Yeah. And I feel, I don't know, even the people around you, like, even if even if they do kind of like you, I'm sure the first reason they 
saw you out is because you're rich, you know? Good point. Well, it just, it, it'd just be hard to be know paranoid. what's genuine and what's not. And and then I, I feel like, like, to an extent, people that are, like, super rich, you would get along with better because you're like, well, they're not trying to gain anything from me. But then it's like, are they? Are they trying to make some business deal on me? Yeah. It's a whole new world. A whole new I'm world sure that I don't understand. I'm sure that's why a lot of the celebrities kind of – go off the deep end a lot of times it's probably a lot to handle that's a good point that's a good point especially the like the you know like the disney so all the disney kids that like grew up doing disney shows have a tendency to like end up going off the deep end Mm -hmm. you know like hannah montana and shit like that selena gomez and demi lovato kept it together pretty well no dude didn't or uh she yeah she was talking about always doing coke and going hard there was that documentary lovato that just she was overdosing on, like, heroin and stuff. That wasn't might be it? right. Wasn't it Demi Lovato that was doing heroin and oh, stuff? She was yeah. It was, it was Damn, a, I hope it was her. There was some <laughs> documentary slandering her name that they not. advertised <laughs> on YouTube as, like, a preview. And it was, like, for, like, I only, like, a week. And she, within the first, like, five seconds, she talks about, she's like, and then As I was Demi, doing cocaine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, crazy. She, yeah. She, like, she's sober now, I'm pretty I sure. she went to rehab a couple times. I think she went back for a while. She but heroin. I think it was. I mean. I, mean I think that was one of the. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's usually what it gets to, I feel like, for some either painkillers or. That's what we were, t- we were talking about, how, like, a lot of, like, the Disney kids end up, like, kids who were on Disney shows. Probably get exposed to it too early. You know, like, high school people probably, at least growing up, you learn how to handle it, you know. They're probably, you know, 14 years old doing blow on <laughs> mm-hmm. shows, probably not knowing what's going on. Good point. Yeah, I don't know. Or having too much money. Do you think you'd want to be famous? Depends what kind of fame. I feel like there are just su- such different kinds of fames. And also, fames, and also, like, what point in life you got that fame. Like, if, if I was 16 and got it, would be very different than if I was 40 and got it. Yeah, if you, if you grew up with it. It'd be hard, because you got to find yourself in the public eye. Yeah. Yeah. Versus, like, the people 40, like, you kind of have yourself kind of figured out. That's that probably point. the whole thing right there. That's why it, that's why it's so rough on them. I, don't know, I feel like I'm too secluded to ever be in any kind of spotlight. You know, like I'm sure you guys are probably. I think I would. I don't know. I wouldn't like being looked at. Like, like that all the time. Yeah. I think I'd be. I think it'd make me stress a lot. I wouldn't want to say stuff because I get attacked exactly, by people. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I bet yeah. it's pros and cons. I've heard celebrities talking about fame itself, like Dan Bilzerian. I was listening to some interview he did, and he's like, "There, there are definitely some benefits to fame. Like some things that you could never get unless you were famous. Like even if you were super rich, like you couldn't get it unless you were famous. People know you. But there's also a t- ton of cons that come with it." So I bet it's pros and cons, but I wouldn't always want people taking pictures of me when I'm like doing private stuff. You know, that's Dude, yeah. that's crossing the line. I'm sure, like they, a lot of them always talk about like when they're going out in public and people walk up with you know their phones, like yeah. putting in their face and stuff. Like, yeah, I bet that sucks. Do you guys know who Noel Miller is by chance? He does stuff with Cody Ko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's super funny. Okay, so look up to your right, right there. Oh shit! Like no, no joke, no joke. I'm um. But it, it, it's all going back That's to the awesome. point of um, of, like whenever I met him, I didn't want to like be all up in his face. Like I, all I could think is like, this dude probably gets hit up by all these different people on a nightly basis. Like, just play it cool. Don't be like up in his face and just like just approaching like, a regular camera. person, you know? Yeah. Somebody, just anybody in the street. And would I was you, I was starstruck, which I've never experienced in my entire life. I'm sure but you're just kind of staring at him. For I was, c- yes, yeah. yes. I'll I'll tell you a story real quick. So yeah, I want to know. It was after, it was literally after our game, after the game that we all played against each other. It was after that. I go to McDonald's. I was supposed to hang out with this one girl, but she ended up bailing, fortunately. And then my friend calls me, and she's like, Jordan. Cody Co is downtown at P Bar. Oh, so it was like a few. It was like a month or so ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. They had like a concert yeah, yeah, or like yeah. a stand up comedian yeah, thing yeah, yeah, like in yeah. town, and I was like, no fucking way. Like Cody Co. Like if I had to name like a top 
10 celebrities, probably even top five, honestly. Yeah. Cody Ko would be on that list. Like, really? I, I think he's... Dude, I'm, I'm a fan, too. He's cool. He's awesome. He's so funny. But, um, so I'm like, no fucking way. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting at McDonald's. I go, I'm like, hey, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to change clothes because I'm all sweaty and gross and smell mm-hmm. disgusting. Can't see Cody and, like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm like, I'll go home. I'll, um... And then we'll we'll head out as soon as we can. So I go by, pick her up, go to my house, change. I go up to P Bar and I go up to the bouncer and I'm like, "Hey, is Cody Co really here?" The bouncer tells me that he he was here, but he left like somewhat recently. So I was like, "Oh shit!" So I told the girl, and she's like, "Well," and we both we both came to the agreement that we should just circle the block. So we just circled the block a few times. And I think we went around, like, four times. Apparently, went through the back of P-Bar. So, we, like, went back there and, like, kind of, like, chilled for a little bit. And then, uh, or, like, slowly drove through there, kind of looking for him. And literally on the last time going around, I was like, oh, oh what, what happened? Oh, we pulled up at the stop sign right next to Pickleman's. And my friend looks over, and she's like, Jordan, that is Noel. I look over. I'm like, no fucking way. That's Noel Miller. That's Noel Miller. Like we thought we were gonna run into him, like in front in of public, or yeah, like yeah. in front of like P bar or something, yeah, yeah, like yeah, out yeah, at yeah. the bars. Yeah. But he's Pickleman. just hanging out in Pickleman. So we, we, uh, I whip a ride. I pull into that Jimmy John's parking lot, get out, and then we walk in and we just stare at him. And I didn't know what to do. And, and like I opened the door for her, not because I'm a gentleman, because I was too scared to go talk to him first. You do it first. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I so I I open the door for her. I'm like, you talk to him first, and then uh, she's like, no, you talk to him first. I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> and I just I just like stare at him, and then he like looks over at us. He can like tell we are like fans, and I just like wave and walk up and and um, like asked him for a selfie, and then told him that I'm a huge fan of like his comedy and whatnot, and then. I, I did mention my podcast, and then he's like, yeah, just keep going with it. And I was like, hell yeah. And then we just went our separate ways. But I didn't want to bother him. Is my the main point I even brought that oh, up to yeah, begin yeah. with. It sounds like, yeah. I, I'd be nervous, too. How would you address him? Were you like, are you Noel Miller, or what would you do? Uh, I, I think he, he could just kind of tell whenever we were staring at him, whenever we walked in. Yeah, and, like, once he, like, looked over and noticed we were staring at him and, like, knew why, uh, at least assumed why, mm-hmm. I just, like, like threw up a wave and then started walking towards him. That's funny. I'm just like, hey, my he name's was, Jordan. <laughs> he was so high. He was stoned as fuck. Really? Oh, really? He He's definitely lot, stoned. Yeah. I didn't know he smoked much. Yeah. I, Cody doesn't smoke, though, I don't think. Oh, really? That's what I've heard, but I don't, I don't know. Interesting, interesting. He could. But so yeah, someone told me he doesn't smoke. I can tell because Noel looks high in some of the, like s- the stuff, the videos they do. One hundred percent. Noel looks stoned. <laughs> that's so. that's cool. He's just chilling in Springfield at Pickleman's High. That's goofy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Probably just Respect. getting a sandwich. Yeah. Just getting a sandwich. A regular dude. Yeah. Regular and we wouldn't dude, have known exactly. if Pickleman's mm-hmm. didn't have that glass on that on that one particular side uh, of the right. building. Saul's head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why they have it. I had a friend. I was like. I don't remember this too well. It was like right when I first came to Springfield and I was like, I was, it was during pledge ship and I was sober driving for this one active. And he, he said, come inside. I'm going to show you how to get a free sandwich from this place. I forgot what this dude did, but he complained about something. He's like, my, my sandwich had this and didn't have this. He had no sandwich. He like, he just bullshitted. He's like, my sandwich didn't do this and whatever. They just hand him a sandwich, and they're, and he's like, all right, thank you. And we just head out. And I'm sober driving this dude around. I forget to this day what he did. Maybe but he, like, said that he ordered a delivery or something, and it, like, didn't, I don't know. Possibly. Or he bought one. See, like, I've had people try to do that before, but I guess I just didn't care. I usually just ask them for the receipt. If they don't have the receipt, then I just don't give it to them. Right. At Jimmy John's. Or yeah. Even if it's a good complaint. But they probably are just like, fuck it, who cares? But that's how I was sometimes. I feel like that's how other people are. Because, I mean, it really, they're not losing anything by giving away a free sandwich. It's kind of the come and go thing. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about giving away Pickle Men's or Jimmy John's money either. True. <laughs> so that lady probably didn't give a shit. 
it's blown my like I've been working in the serving industry and it blows my mind like same deal. So it's people cool. though, people try to they'll just complain and the I managers are just like like just like that. I've dealt with the same thing. It's crazy. Yeah. Where have you served at? Uh Olive Garden down here. Oh really? Cool. And they yeah, they um yeah, it just it's blowing my mind how easy people can get away with shit. It's not our, but I don't ever want to be the per- like cause I know it's easy to do and I could, but I don't want to. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. I feel uncomfortable being that person. You have to be an asshole. Yeah, that's all it takes, really. You have to be cheap. You probably probably broke, honestly. You just have to cause enough of a problem that the management's like, just fucking here, just Let's take go. it. Get it, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I've d- dealt with a lot of people like that too. It's annoying as hell. I agree, Mason. I've I've thought about that because I wouldn't do it. That it's like, uh, I'd be like that. Like even even like a one time thing, you know. Like some people say, "Oh, we should dine and dash just for the experience, just for the no. thrill." Even that, I'm like, I don't really have much interest in that. Well, because you're skeeting out the server too. Is yeah, a thing. Hundred yeah. percent. What if you dined and dash and gave like a good tip? Fuck it. I hope Fuck that it? the company <laughs> would just take the money towards the food. Yeah. I probably that wouldn't. Would suck. I probably wouldn't do it, but like. I guess option, yeah. It'd, be, it'd make cool. it more acceptable. I wouldn't feel as bad about <laughs> it. I guess. True. True. What's that called? It's a. Uh, Even in the experience of just like stealing, like, I just don't. I don't like acting dishonestly. I really don't. I really don't. I watch my buddies get tackled by the cops and one run away, and after that, just first stealing, he so stole a pair of sunglasses from the mall, and after that, it's just like that kind of stuff's not worth it <laughs> whatsoever. I don't want to be that person that did. <laughs> I bet it was situation. super embarrassing too. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I was happy. I was far away from all that. How how expensive were the sunglasses? I mean, they were. Uh, what's it called? What's the really popular Ray-Bans brand? Or yeah, they're a pair of Ray Bans. Probably like 150 bucks. Let me go to the restroom as well. But it was like at Sunglasses Hut. Sunglass Hut. So like, each one was like lined uh-huh. up, and it was lit like a lit display. So as soon as you grabbed one, you could tell it was gone. So as soon as oh. we as soon as we walked out, they like the guy obviously knew, so he called the police. So we, I mean, they started running off. I just because I, I didn't do anything, so I just walked behind them, and they got Kushi got handcuffed. And You've told me this story. Yeah, yeah I, I just cause I stayed back. They didn't see me. I walked away fine. You're not the one running, and you don't have sunglasses on you. I had nothing to do with that. I was Still like, call my parents, if I were to be dishonest. I would act as if I was honest. Like I, I, I feel I kind of believe in the theory of like hiding in plain sight and like just acting innocent. Yeah. If you act guilty, then you're like literally just giving it away. Well, once you get caught too, I feel like there's a reason in continuing to lie. If you do do something like if you know what I mean, like carrying out something that the truth is out there and you just refuse to accept it. You know what I'm saying? No, no, I'm not following. Like, if you tell a lie and you get caught up in it, you should just tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Like some people just keep going with the lie. But uh, Somebody that we both know, that you know a lot better, <laughs> yeah. is coming to mind, and I feel like you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, it's just unnecessary. I agree. It's bad enough to be in that position in the first place for no reason to make it worse. Plus, like, if you, if you, were, um, if you were the person, or if I was lying to you and you caught me in a lie... Would you respect me more if I, in that moment, just fessed up, or if I kept going with a lie, and then you're like, bro, like, I know you're fucking lying. Like, just admit it. Well, if you fess up, that's at least taking responsibility for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's easier to just kind of forget and move on from compared to not taking responsibility. Because you don't want to be some friends with somebody who's not going to take responsibility for their actions, because that's just going to hurt you in the end. Those aren't the kind of people, especially when... That's what I'm realizing now as I'm getting older, is I don't want to be around people that aren't going to pay their rent or going to do it. Like, just people that are going to put you in shitty situations, you know? Like, I mean, you had that experience last year at your house with your roommate who was, you didn't got your freaking house destroyed. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be those, you don't want those people in your life. Oh, if I could have never had that guy in my life, I would have definitely taken that. That's wise, though. That's wise. I agree. I, I feel like as I've gotten older, like, I I like to be proud of who I, like, really surround myself with. Because when you're young, 
it's kind of, I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's funny, but it is. It is. <laughs> like, just not giving a shit, you know, because it doesn't matter, you know, there's, at least with our friends, like, where we grew up, like, it was okay to just not care, but now we're getting older and you have to have responsibility. It affects everybody. And it's cool, like, it's starting to get cooler to care, too. Yeah, be responsible. I feel like at some point, being smart whenever you're young is not cool. And then you get older, it's and cool being spot. smart becomes cool. Because then, being smart when you get older translates into money. That's when it gets cool. Yeah, good point. Yeah, <laughs> good People point. When you're smart in, like, fifth grade, it doesn't fucking matter. No one gives a shit. <laughs> when you're you smart when you're 30, you're rich. It's cool. <laughs> Plus, like, I don't know. I don't like hanging out with bimbos now. Yeah, it's yeah. just not. There's a point where you need to forward yourself and not hold yourself back. I feel like bums just kind of keep you in that hole 100 percent. even if i'm not doing anything i still don't want to be around it <laughs> it promotes negative behavior for sure mm-hmm. do you guys like how i'm sporting the the sports water bottle the gatorade water bottle and then also like got a beer i fuck with it it's like i saw all the gatorade caps in your uh oh you saw yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> is it just just collection I did that my like I think it was like freshman year of high school. Okay. Mainly because I was like I drink a lot of Gatorade. At the time I used to drink a ton of Gatorade. Now I like I can see never that. drink Gatorade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. There were like four hundred. They're probably like three hundred now. I remember seeing that in your room. There was an insane amount of caps in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I used to keep it down here actually on that bottom shelf. But um, yeah, I collected collected Gatorade caps. Just to see like how many I I had, and then I found like how fun they are to flick, and we'd have bottle cap wars. So that's what I use them for now. Yeah, those are super. Mm. I've been You're nice at that. Caps. I've been getting the bottle caps lately, and so you know at our place how there's you walk in, and then you turn right, and there's like the kitchen tables, and there's the bottles up there. Mm-hmm. I've been just trying to hit the bottles with the the lids lately. Nice. Just knock them over. It's very entertaining to try and like. I mean, I'm sure playing bottle cap wars is the same way. It's probably more fun. It's like Nerf wars. Yeah, because it, it's <laughs> hard to get like really accurate with, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. How far you can make it go is the coolest part to me. Yeah. Fucking fling that thing. You get, yeah, you get some power <laughs> and some speed on there. You can get some distance. You can and bo- it just it like, hurts. it's like straight line yeah. too. It's <laughs> like a dart <laughs> just flying at you. How far do you think you could do? I don't even know. I'm trying to think of something. How, how many feet or how many yards? Yards is probably an easier measure. I feel like I could do like 30 yards on like the launch one of those 30 yards. You got a professional that was good at it. I can't do that shit. Really? Yeah. So I bet you could learn if you. If uh, you yeah, I just don't know how to do it. I spent a lot of time messing with it in my room. So you seem very out. experienced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sat in my dorm and flicked bottle caps and shot the cards. You know what I'm talking about? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, Edison yeah. spent probably like three weeks looking at them at our wall trying to figure out mm. how to get the spin on them. That's always been so impressive to me. I'm so bad at that, it's man. so much fun. When you get are, you, down, are you scared of that, too? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> that would cut you, too. <laughs> do, do you think somebody can do it hard enough? Oh, yeah. Dude, I, there's oh, got to be somebody there's in the videos of Aren't there videos of people, like, cutting shit in half? They're cutting, like, through fruit. With yeah. Dude. There's special with cards? cards? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Like thick dude, cards or like something? Inc- there's, like, videos of people, like, they'll have a candle, and, like, the dude will shoot the card, and he'll, like, Flick the candle out, like cut the wick off. That's with crazy. the car. Yeah, it'll fucking know? cut you. It's that's impressive. Crazy. Mm. I feel like those people. That's like something that happens in Asian culture. That's Asian, <laughs> and then like the weird Americans. <laughs> Dude, it's. I can see it being entertaining, but I cannot understand getting to the point. That, like, <laughs> that kind of accuracy of, is insane. It's, it's also a lot of time that you've devoted to that. Yeah, right. And a lot of goddamn free time. <laughs> Damn cool, cool talents, good bar trick. Yeah, good point. <laughs> hey, you want to see me slice this guy's throat with this card? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get some thick cards what? made out of like carbon fiber and just. Could you actually grab me one? Sure. Thank you, sir. It's like a good old natty light. Carbon fiber cards. Were, was there anybody up there whenever you went up there? Yeah, there was. I didn't. I don't. There was a group. I don't know. There was like four people. Ooh. It looked like, like, was it all like the two girls that were there before. Okay, cool. I was just curious if they're still here. One of your friends rolled a really big uh, cigarette. It's huge. <laughs> oh, <Very> nice. <laughs> Would you guys like to partake? No, I mean I'm 
Not me, huh? Are you good? Yeah. I'm good right now. Yeah. Go sure. on. <laughs> yeah. I like um, this. I like this so far. This is cool. You enjoy this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not really even. Have, how, how long has it been? What would you guess? 45 minutes. What would you guess? An hour. Uh, 35 minutes. 35? Yeah, hour and 15 minutes. Wow. Cool. Right. I probably always, I always say this to Mason, I feel like, but yeah, it, it always, it, it, it I, I always guess more than what I think because it feels, it always feels shorter than how long it is. Yeah, yeah. That's why I guess the hour, but I went with my gut. <laughs> I mm. totally regret it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. It's cool. Just like having a conversation. How'd you decide to uh, to do this? Honestly, with our grandpa. With our grandpa, I just started really? doing it with him. I don't remember what my full intentions were at the time, but I had started listening to podcasts for like six, seven months at that point. And I was like, I'm at a point in my life I could do this, and it sounds like a fun thing to do. So I started just recording conversations with our grandpa like over that summer, and we did like eight together or something like that did he did and he then, was he aware that they were being recorded oh 100 percent, 100 percent. thought you were so just fucking hitting click and <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's just like wait is this yeah. like two hours don't worry in? about it don't worry about it don't, don't <laughs> grandpa's right don't ask questions you're seeing i'll remember that's really cool though yeah and then um actually with mason and his girlfriend um on my birthday of what have been like 2017, that's when I like really started hitting it out a lot harder, and I was like, I really enjoy doing this. Like, I really enjoy doing this, and then yeah. it just became something that just like built, built a uh, almost like compounded in how much like free time I was putting towards it. And then I can see, dude, you got all this equipment. Like, it's cool. And I, it, like I it. feel like I'm at the point now to where it's not. It's not like I have to put a lot of work into it anymore. You have it's all just stuff already. One hundred percent. And then I just have to like av- like doing the actual podcast. Then I edit the podcast. Like I just have to link up the audio with the the video, and then I save it, which I just have to leave my computer like unattended for what like seven hours usually, oh, yeah. and then I will edit up like each clip and I'll just try to get like two three good clips out of like every podcast and so like it doesn't it's pretty much the same thing over and over and over but I still enjoy doing it I enjoy editing them because I I don't know say you say something that's interesting or something that's funny like I would literally like sit there editing it and just die laughing Mm -hmm. like like laughing again because I'm like reliving that moment if that makes sense it's cool to reflect on the conversation a bit and kind of get absorb what you got out of it what you talked about Absolutely, because sometimes you remember it different than it actually was. I, it's almost always that way with everything, soccer games included. I that's definitely happened. Like, have you ever watched a video of yourself playing soccer and then? Yeah, that was not how that. I looked way cooler than that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I connect any moments on the field to watching it on a videotape of me playing. You know what I mean? Like from. Like some of the goals that I scored did not look like the angle that I was on on the field. That's what I'm saying. It looks way cooler. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty <laughs> dope. <laughs> Have you seen like the videos of uh? Well, there was a Nike commercial that they made a long time ago. You know, like these are the re- do the really dope Nike soccer Dude, commercials. Dude, the, the uh, when it st- when it stays on lots. <laughs> that that shit. That one was cool, but there was one that they had like uh, oh, the, yeah, they had yeah, like yeah. the chess cam on like one of the soccer players, and yeah. they were playing against like all like Ronaldinho was out there, like yeah. all the good. Soccer, like I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But like he's on like the field view with all of them. Like I mean, it's not real, but it like looks like it looks Fucking like you're playing soccer. Sick. Yeah, but they did that with like they're doing that with the referees now. Some games they'll have like referee have like a pocket wow. camera, on, which is to- like <laughs> when, like when they're calling the foul and like running towards the players. Like those dudes are huge. Like like it just it looks really? totally different when it's on the when the field. I guess view. that makes sense. They're professional athletes. They probably aren't. Dude, Van Dyke's tank dude he could be <laughs> a football linesman but he's a center back he's awesome he is massive mm. i would that's a good point because you always see him from above and they don't look as big like you can tell they're bigger <laughs> than everybody else but you don't really know like same thing with like million to billion you don't can't connect those dots i guess wait is that the like the pro football player that or not uh, pro soccer player that is also a bodybuilder i do not believe so wait who's billy to what'd you say 
Hmm? Van Dyke? Is Van Dyke. Or who'd you say after Virgil Van Dyke? Van Dyke. I don't recall. Oh, you said Millie Ventilli. I <laughs> Maybe I just misheard what you said. My bad. No, I thought, no, I thought no, you were no, saying it. You know who's a big ass soccer player is Hulk. Yeah, Hulk. true. That dude is fucking huge. Diego who's the Costa, other, the I black think. dude with the huge oh, legs? Wow. I feel like he. <laughs> uh, some, I feel like he played in the Italian league. No, nah, it's he played for Man City, bro. It's Balotelli. Yeah, Balotelli. Not Balotelli. It's somebody different. This guy's older than Balotelli. He's he's been he's Describe probably been Canada. retired for a while. Big black dude. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I want to oh, say he's in the Chelsea? Italian league. Drogba? Not no, Drogba. No. Dude, he Drogba's was big Man too, C- though. He was on Man City, bro. I swear to God. He was really good, apparently. Like this uh, guy. This was a guy that was world class. I'm pretty sure. Dude, did he did he like he play Man, Man City? Man, it was he was, was he on Man City, bro. I swear. Oh, uh, Torre. Tor- yeah, yeah, Tor- not Torre, right no. Oh, that dude is huge. He's too, massive though. as well. <laughs> you know what um, team you played on? If you give me a team, I probably can figure it out. I want to say maybe Juventus, maybe Milan. Juventus, Milan? I don't know. I was How thinking of Torre, though. He's Pogba? huge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up. This is going to be a really interesting Google search. Big, big black Italian. Dude. Big black Italian. You better be careful. Crazy. <laughs> 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 I just hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was. I I opened my phone and this girl that I have not talked to in like a few days, a few weeks, texted me. I put my cat down today. <laughs> it's like what? what? You just text people that randomly out of the blue? What what, what do I Looking say to for that? Looking for emotional support of some sorts. <laughs> or something. <laughs> Black. Wait, I, 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 I really do. I gotta be careful. I don't want. I don't want <laughs> Tell her like what happened to your pets and make her feel bad. <laughs> yeah, just bring up my, my situation. Dude, dude, yeah, you could just one up her and be. Like, hey, my mom you. murdered my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what happened? Fuck you. <laughs> you met Rhonda right the other week. Yeah, his, his mom. Yeah. yeah. Flipped the bike. The dog got like. Caught under it or something. Got the wheel. Yeah. She. She got pretty hurt, didn't she? Your mom. Okay, this is not who I was talking about, but this is I came across this guy the other day. Who's that? <laughs> I don't know how to say his name. His I don't know either. I'll try to. He looks huge. Oh, here's a better picture. Wow. <laughs> like him without his shirt off, he's l- he's literally a fucking bodybuilder. Yeah. Goddamn. I'm gonna try to say his name. Sahid Abu Bawu Akin Fenway. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I'm sure when he says it, it sounds perfectly smooth and normal. This is one of those things I I, hmm. I don't know. This is this is this is still interesting because this is <laughs> yeah. this is who I was kind of thinking of, but um, isn't Vincent Seedorf Seedorf Vincent Company? Who? Is it Seedorf? It just like popped in my head. I think that's who I'm like yeah, who I was originally I'm thinking of. Him. Yeah, Vincent Company is pretty big dude really? too. Yeah. yeah, he's black as well, right? Yeah, he's lighter skinned. Oh, he was on Milan. Seedorf Strong. Strong. <laughs> what the fuck? His last there name was a uh, must be a big guy. Somebody was telling me a dude they went to high school with that had a less name, the last name Muscle Man. That's big as fuck. Just ba- Balotelli might even have bigger legs than him. I don't know. Mm-hmm. This guy without a shirt off though, it's literally has like yeah, an eight pack. Huge. Dude, soccer players' legs are like impressively fucking huge. Ronaldo's legs, dude. Jordan, you should look up. Uh, you remember Daryl Duran? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he played on the ambush, I think that's the team he played on with Tony Glavin. Or would it be the Steamers? Mayo, the Steamers, yeah, yeah. The dude had tree trunks for thighs. There was a picture he had in his gym when I went up there. It was the biggest thighs I've ever seen. Really? Soccer player, yeah. Just <coughs> like How do you spell Daryl Duran? I think it's D-A-R-R-E-L and then D-U. I know his last name's D-U-R-A-N. D-U... R A N, D U R A N, yeah. That guy, that guy's like, like his gym is like right next to us. Yeah, I, I went there a couple of times. It was kind of weird. Here, I'll let you type it in. I don't think I'm spelling it right. He's like right next to us, like back in St. Louis, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool. It's not like the biggest deal, but he's like he's kind of a local celebrity, but nobody talks about him. Yeah. I guess he's not. Uh, it's not like a huge deal. How big were the steamers? You know, like how big of a team was that? 
think they were popular. I've never, size, never heard of that. Before. Okay. It was like an indoor soccer. Oh, okay. Kind of. We have that in Kansas City. We have the the. So comments. how popular would you say it is? Not. It's not. Oh really? People people have heard of it for sure, but like as far as like attendance at the games, not not super. I don't popular. think there's anything really on there, pictures wise. I think it was just a special picture he had. Okay. Do you think um, do you think if KC Sporting wasn't around, they'd be like significantly more popular? The comments. Yeah. Um. No. No. Do they have a three point line? Mm-hmm. Or like a two point? Yeah. That shit. I've seen. See, it's it's kind of like. That I feel like stuff like that it, like has a ceiling. Like it's not really that, soccer. Yeah. Anymore. See, like it can't it can't get that big. You know, mm-hmm. it's not gonna get that big. It's like indoor football. Yeah, game. exactly. But it, but with soccer, which is less popular. Ex- yeah. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like it's a it's a subset of a fucking subset already. Like mm-hmm. it's not gonna. I think indoor soccer no, soccer is pretty much fun enough as it is. It is. Just, it's like, super fun. I, at this age, I like it <laughs> you significantly don't. more than. Well, do you ever play on a on an indoor field where like it's like a hockey, like just walls, like? I did. All through high school. That yeah. shit's exhausting. That yeah. shit is a lot of running. What, like the hockey walls? Yeah. Oh. Because it doesn't go out of bounds. The oh, walls yeah. Out of bounds. Yeah. That. It gets tiring. Wait, yeah, wait, you're saying indoor soccer with, with walls or with... Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. we've always Like, that's how we've always had it, yeah. with walls. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have some fields, like, that there's not wall, like, it's, there's out of bounds. Like normal. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't I know think. that wasn't a thing. No, I don't think Where we ever. Even I like think about hockey specifically, but no, yeah, we have like the complex that we play at. There's a field with like that's built like a hockey rink, and then there's a field that's just like indoors, but there's out of bounds and shit. It's kind of like what we saw at Springfield when we were doing a referee training. Remember that field we did the indoor futsal on? We actually had to call the games. Damn! So you guys only play on fields that have walls? Like yeah. I thought the field you're talking about, but I don't remember that. I thought they yeah. had yeah. walls. That one didn't have walls, but there was the one. It was a smaller field. It was in the back because it had the bleachers on the side. We just walk on and off. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, that was that's funny. Oh, you are right. Yeah, I, I'm following. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the times I played were, was like that, but we have like I've played a bunch of games where there's out of bounds indoors. It'd be totally different. Interesting. Experience. Yeah, it really would be. It's hard. The walls, the walls just add so much. It's it's hard with because it's basically just normal soccer, but on a way, way, way smaller field. So it's kind of hard. Right. Yeah. It's just like playing the fraternity league. Mm-hmm. It's different. That frat league's like really rough. Dude, that it's like very physical. It's very like physical attributes are rewarded way I think more it's than like, like the fraternity against fraternity kind of thing. That's definitely an element. Which is kind of fucking stupid. It's like, <laughs> I enjoy playing it, but I don't really like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I enjoy playing the soccer, but I don't like... The competition. It also sucks that Missouri State's, like, organization for it that is piss big. poor. Like, probably, Dude. like, I've seen people that are super fucked up at Matson have no idea what's going on, manage a workplace better than these college, like, people that are working there. Oh, the, yeah. Dude, I we agree. had so many, so the many games. The refs are terrible. Well, well, the refs and, and the management. Even, yeah, Dude, like, we had the scheduling. Awful. We had so many games. We'd show up, and people just like the other team didn't show up. There was one day they, s- oh yeah, people just didn't show up. The shit, it sucked. There was one game where we showed up, and they told us that they had double booked the field that day on accident. They Even did that to us, but we were the ones who got to keep it. Wow. But it was we probably, it was it was probably <laughs> you, my luckers. <laughs> 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 Whatever we were trying to get on. Yeah, and they were just like, <laughs> it might have been you guys. Dude, it it was wait, was was it against Sig High? Do you remember? I, I, dude, I don't. No, it, it, it was, was Sid Kai and somebody <laughs> else. It, it was us and Pike, and they like, they um. No, it I don't was remember. I don't remember what they said, but it was on our Tuesday night league. Is that when the games were? I think it was the. T- I don't know. It was. It wasn't the night that we played the fraternity games. Okay. I think you guys played Monday, didn't you? That is right. That's correct. We played Tuesday, but yeah, I don't know. They like, we've been scheduled for that day the whole entire season. That's annoying. And that was the last game of the season. We were. Because we had played everybody else, but the last team was um, a lot of the players were, like, older guys in our chapter that had graduated or that we just know through the years. That oh, that would chapter. have been really cool. Yeah, it would have been a fun game to play, but they canceled it, didn't email us or tell us. That, and then, the, then they never rescheduled it after. Like, it's how hard of a job can it be? How it's do you not, fuck that up? Dude, I've done scheduling before, and it's mm. 
you literally just yeah. click in the box and the box is full of something, then you don't put something else mm-hmm. in the box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe their system sucks. Maybe it's not the employees. I, maybe it's like the system. I, I don't know. I don't know. How do, like, how do you fuck that up more than once? Mm-hmm. You can't play in two teams in the same sport. Yeah, like in different leagues. They can't play in the FSL and the just the regular rec leagues. Like that's dumb. You should be able to play in. I get not playing in the same league, but I should be able to play in different leagues and be okay. 100%. If I'm paying to play there with my tuition already. If someone from, like, really long ago saw what we were doing right now, they'd be so confused. Like, with the mics? And yeah. <laughs> I've never thought about that. I've, that's what I've been thinking about for, like, the past five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, wait, they're sitting around talking. They're, we're not doing anything. We're just... We're doing normal shit, but we're just that we have this shit on. <laughs> why are they? Why are they wearing those headphones? What are those headphones for? What, they, are, what are these things they're talking yeah. to? Because everything else is the same. <sighs> Not weird. Yeah, that is a funny. That is a really funny thought. I wonder if it's gonna be like that world. I have no idea what the fuck's going on. Just like people are communicating telepathically. Just like. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's what Hayden. freaking Elon mm-hmm. Musk is on, dude. No, Neuralink. No conversation, <laughs> dude. That stuff is. Listen to him talk wait, about wait, that stuff. That? Neuralink. It's basically, he's going to put something on. I don't know if it's on your spinal cord, too, but it's definitely in your brain. But it basically makes you... Like, you basically will have access to all of technology, internet, in your brain. But like, somehow, I guess, you'll be able to, like, control it in your head. Like, have access to all that information in your brain already. Crazy. It's like, can it corrupt like your thoughts? Yeah. Then you're not even a... Are you even a person at that point? Well, something he was talking about is, like, really at this point, like, we're not just, like, our phones, even though they're not attached to us, like, for the most part, they they're are, part like, of us. they're who we are. Like, you, yeah. your knowledge is in your phone. Like, you rely like on your phone. Like, you don't go, you don't learn stuff with the books, usually. If you need to know something, you go to your phone, you look it up. Instant access. Mm-hmm. But that would be even more instant. Yeah. Which, yeah, it, that is interesting, because he uses the word cyborg. Like, we're already cyborgs. We're already cyborgs. Yeah. Like, that's people... That's what people don't understand is we already are. And that would just be a just much quicker more, access. That that's kind of what I was line. thinking of, like, about, like, this. Like, it's that's probably what people would think. It's like, why are they recording themselves? They're just having a conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. People like to listen to other people. I've tried to be on my phone less. It's hard, though. It is difficult. See the screen time, and then you're like, "Oh Dude, my god!" What's what's yours like? Do you do you glance know. at it? I guarantee it changes. Let's see what my mine definitely changes as well. Let's see what the average is. I think mine is a is usually about four hours. I'm usually is, about is what it's like. Mine's four hours. Oh, it went from four hours, forty minutes to four hours, forty one minutes. What's yours? I'm down twenty percent from last week. Nice. Usually about three, but. I'm four, about four hours, ten minutes. Which we're on the that that seems that's a, a weird way to think about that is there's 24 hours in a day, four hours are on your phone. That's a, that's a sixth of the day. So realistically, you're, you're spending sleeping two, for eight of it. Two months, two months of the year you're spending on your phone. It's weird. I mean, yeah, dude, like that <laughs> is a part of you. Like, yeah, two two calendar months, like you're just on your phone. I wonder if it's t- counting like playing music, you know? Because I definitely spend a lot of time like. Does that count? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it does. Hmm. That I would, would assume explain. screen that time means like what you're literally like your That's screen is going. That's too. Because if it's music, I feel like it'd be mm-hmm. probably more. Right. Every time I'm in the mm-hmm. car, I'm yeah. music on my phone for sure. The thing that sucks about phones though is <coughs> if you lose your phone, you're fucked. <laughs> if you learn how to do all that shit, then at least it's in your head, you know. That takes yeah, good point. a lot longer. You know, it's w- it's worth the risk because it's. Do we want something we're dependent on though in our heads? In Dude, I don't want. I don't want that. Even, we don't have the option. That. You got to consider what you consider the next step in human. Like, do you consider that? Like, is that what we're supposed to become? Is that the next step of well, like technology who? and what we're supposed to like? That's something they're talking about with Elon Musk. Is that like what we're supposed to like? Is that what humans are? Who supposed decides to what's supposed to though? Exactly. That's the thing. <laughs> but yeah, that's scary. I wouldn't like that. Do you think it's a step forward or a step backwards? I'm I think. Yeah, go ahead, Ferg. You first. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, 
I think it's just dope. I would 100% try it. Yeah. If, if it was, like, totally safe, yeah, I'd hop in on it. Would you like to see it be, like, a integrated into, like, our society as, like, a you, norm? If you want it, then you should get it. But I, I like – that's very personal. Like, that's inside your body. You know, if you don't – a lot of people are very defensive about that. So I wouldn't expect other people to do I would it, definitely try it for sure. But so I, I wouldn't like that – I wouldn't like that to become, like, as normal as, like, a, a phone is, yeah. you know? Like, oh, dude, if you don't have a fucking thing in your brain, you're weird. Like, you know, it's hard to speculate yeah. what it would even be like. So I don't I'm know. I want it to be 100% guaranteed that, that nothing bad is going to happen. And Something. I mean, like true. I think in for that reason exactly, I think, I think I'd try it. I wouldn't be the first one to jump off the bridge, but if somebody jumped off the bridge, they're down in the water. They're swimming around. They're having a good time. They're like, yo, check it out down here. It's sick. It's dope. It's very deep underneath that bridge. Jump off. I I would jump off, but my point being is I'm not going to be the first one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to push the limits. As long as it's not like a – well, fuck, would it be like a permanent thing? I think he talks about being able to turn it off and remove it and stuff like that. But I That's mean, the thing. I'd like a taste of it. I don't – it's like a, I don't want to say, I mean, it's sort of like having all that knowledge is almost like a drug. Like, it's like know, the, it's like, yeah. The movie Limitless. You guys seen that? Yeah, like having, like I'm sure that? having that kind of power in your mind is like, it'd be like a drug, the euphoria. Like just, because who knows, like, same thing with AI. Like, if you have access to all that instantaneously, in instantaneously, like, who knows mm. what the fuck you could do. You could do crazy things with that kind of Dude, stuff. Dude, that would be a sort of fucking sense of euphoria just ev like i mean who, like everything who knows? is at your fucking fingertips it's who right knows there, what like all that knowledge would make you feel like because i mean that's everything we were on the internet so like how it's biased on the internet is probably how your mind is going to function based on the data that's coming in that's fuck <laughs> god damn it i didn't think I about mean, that hopefully you still have your moral values you know but where how fingers crossed how does it how would it differentiate between the two though that's what I was saying. You know, like how, is a, how is an electronic thought able to consider the moral part of you? See, that's, that's why I want to try it. That's why, that's why I would you know? want to try it. It's because, like, how would that feel? Like, how, what would that be like? Or you know, would like, it feel like crazy. anything? Yeah. Or would Maybe you just it would feel like nothing. Maybe you would just fucking know it. Yeah. That's why, like, it's, cause it's like a drug. It changes your perception of reality. Your subjective perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's crazy, though. That's a great point. That's a great point. Hmm. What do you think? What would you do? Like, is is the concept of Neuralink basically that you are just, like, instant access almost as if you're retrieving it from your memory? That's, that's, what, that's, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't, dude, I don't think anybody really understands what it'd be like. You know what I mean? Like, the, how do you put that into words? Because I've, I've, my understanding is Elon Musk has been kind of like hush hush about it, like keeping it kind of low key in comparison I haven't to heard like about it, yeah. some of his it's other the first ventures. Time of it. But it can't I've only heard him talk about it on podcasts like once, and then maybe like some TED talk or something, or some like public announcement. But and maybe like an here. article here and there. But I, I don't know much about. It. I think I've watched a documentary on it as well. But Dude, it could be stuff too, or like. Since it's connected to like your spine, like your nervous system, it accelerates signals or creates signals that change the way your body moves, your body function. You know, so you could become more coordinated or potentially control like what kind of hormones you release. You know, use that to fight cancers and stuff. I mean, that would be super complicated, and intricate, and really big like a what if but that'd be crazy if it went into medicine somehow but that'd be like hacking into the code of a computer the scary thing is is that advancements like that and technology like the first thing it's always used for is as a weapon so mind yeah. control is the only thing i can mm -hmm. think exactly would you know if your mind was being controlled too God, well that's the point you right? that you don't yeah. dude well and too, if if it's like an electronic thing, like can't someone hack into that? Well, that's if it's connected to a server. I think. I mean, it. Right. I don't know if. I mean, if Maybe it doesn't have like a Wi-Fi. I don't know how it fucking works. <laughs> Maybe if it. I mean. I don't know, but the th the thing is too, if it's like, if it's getting fucked with, you just turn it off. 
and it wouldn't hopefully i mean i would assume if you turned it off it wouldn't like kill you you know like you could function without it just yeah, like whenever you turn these things <laughs> off they're not actually listening to you but they are they're still on elon yeah. musk we have a lot of questions <laughs> we yeah, want to know some yeah. answers he's gonna do, do another joe rogan podcast and that'd be sick that'd be sick that was by far the one I've listened to the most. That was a cool one. I've listened to all like two, three times, something like that. I've listened, I was thinking about it today, I've listened to like a thousand Joe Rogan podcasts, but I don't know if I've ever actually finished one. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I listen to like a shit ton of them, but I listen to like 20, 30 minutes of it. It's hard to commit that whole time. It's hard. The only time I finish them is when I'm driving home. like from uh, Yeah, from okay, yeah. That's, that's interesting because I probably make it 50% or more. But only on like a fair share, like the one, like the names I really like or the whatever. Yeah. But I'll listen to the ones I really like. If I if I listen to it, I'm like, that was really good. Then I'll I'll play it again. Like I'll oh, literally yeah. I'll play the same podcast like three times. Yeah, I do the opposite. I listen to like everything in short amount of times. That's interesting. Like yeah. just the the little approaches that go into just a simple something as simple as listening to a podcast. Just That's if funny. I like what I'm hearing. I think it's because I listen to it when I'm taking a shit. So I listen to it for like ten minutes, and then when the next shit, I That's listen to another one for like ten minutes. So That's, like funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like those highlight clips a lot. You get like five or six minutes in there, dude. Then exactly. Yeah. You get like a real. You get the basically the very summary of a very long and tedious conversation. Basically, the main point of what they were talking about. For sure. I'm trying to uh, on that topic. I'm trying to start a a podcasting. Uh, how would you call this? A podcasting YouTube channel for like just clips mm -hmm. with this. Because I think I have some good clips on here. Mm -hmm. But I want to outsource it. Like I don't want to do it myself. I want somebody else to mm -hmm. manage it. So it's like I'm at the point now. It's like how am I going to find somebody? And I have no money to pay anybody. Right, yeah. So yeah. that's the thing. Is I guess I, I could pay, but it wouldn't be like good pay. So when it's like it's a lot of videos to go through. But I mean, I guess you already have a lot of clips too that you probably already gone through. So that would it would help. be easy now. Like I'm setting it up, right? Like whenever I make the clips of each one, I'm making more clips than I usually do. Mm. I just need somebody to clip those clips up, which would be super simple. Yeah. But I just I just don't really want to manage it. It's just too much time. It's too much time at this point. I just kind of came to a point after I've clipped up the first hundred episodes and I've got some quality clips online of that. And after that, I was like, dude, it's just, this is just, this, this you have a second lot of channel. It takes what yeah. you like doing out of it, I feel like. That's yeah, past what I wasn't enjoying it. that. I wasn't enjoying that at all. It was really tedious work. And you like the, like this kind of aspect of it, not necessarily like the editing. The simple stuff. editing and then choosing my own appeal of like, I like that clip. Like, I, I like that clip. Oh, okay. If that makes yeah. sense. But like managing it on its own, it's not even that much work. It's really not that much work. It's probably, probably an extra like. I'd say on average, like two. If I put two hours a week into it, but I don't even want to put that much into like the second channel because nothing's paying the, off well, yet. Yeah, so. I was about to say, what's the benefit? Right, like pretty much just helping. And like in theory, I would be trying to build a brand. The brand being clips. that podcast, and then the shorter clips are going to gain way more exposure. Right, right Like right, the retention right. rate's going to be much higher. Watching the entire podcast. clip, it's and easier then. to watch the small stuff. Absolutely. And then you choose one particular topic, like who knows? This episode might be called like I was wondering Kanye what this, what West, this would be called, and then yeah. whatever, like o yeah. whatever, like it might like I usually keep just one or one or two titles, versus like a podcast clip could be something very specific of our thoughts on Kanye West earlier, yeah, or whatever else we I talked about, Neuralink, yeah. like yeah. yeah, it's just it's I think it's a lot easier to brand. It's easier to find people oh, that's with true. what they like to watch. You know, like More it's, it's specific market. Yeah, I was about to say. And with the 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 view rate is and like the the watch time and all of it, I've looked at the analytics. I'm like, this is worth doing. Mm -hmm. Like, this is worth doing. If I'm gonna do this podcast thing, this is worth doing. I just don't want to do it. Call me lazy, but I just I do like you said. I don't enjoy it doing it at all. So it's like well, that's why you're doing this, right? It's because you like it. Yeah, it's that's like just the a first, hobby. The first and foremost thing, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's dope. Pretty much, I, it's pretty much like a, a hobby that I could potentially make money off of. But that all starts with making like, gaining like a loyal following, mm -hmm. and that just that takes a fair amount of work and like, but more so just like I really really enjoy doing this. I think it's like a really it's one of my favorite hobbies. No, I like I, I'm enjoying it. It's and cool. even if people, 
Even if it's never becomes huge, you still have it on there for yourself. Dude, you're gonna have forever. a lot of fucking stories on here. What made you do it with your grandpa at first? What was that? Kind of, kind of a uh, good question. Uh, pretty much just, I was like, I, I don't know. I, I always had like a pretty cr- close relationship with them, and I've had a lot of good conversations with them growing up. And we, as I've gotten older, I've started to disagree with them more and more and more. But we still have so, like really good conversations. They challenged me conceptually to where I feel like I started thinking like independently a lot more. So that is like deep in my appreciation for them. But I, regardless, I've had a very deep relationship with my grandparents and with our grandparents. And I kind of took on the responsibility myself to be able to preserve their legacy for like future generations. Like if I, I don't know who, whoever their offspring would be. So then their, their great grandkids, their great, great grandkids, their great, 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 great grandkids could see them because I, it, it kind of started with the thought of, if you think back, like I'll ask you this question. If you think back on your great grandma, uh, like, did you know her by chance, or... Yeah, I... I yeah. Okay, yeah. great-great-grandma. No. What do you think of? My great-great-grandma? Mm-hmm. I... Nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Like, nothing. Yeah. Like, like I, I don't think of shit. Like, yeah, nothing. I don't even know who that is, to I be honest. That like, is, like yeah. no clue. I, I don't know their personality type. I don't know if they're an asshole. I don't know if they're really cool. If they were kind, compassionate, like, anything. So I was like, this is a cool opportunity to be able to sit down with my grandparents and then, like kind of just like throw something out there that I could have forever and I was kind of not that I'm obsessed with like immortality but more so like I'm a, I really love the idea of like being able to have that for close forever. to forever like the rest of my life at least Dude. assuming the internet doesn't completely crash and what whatever I don't know I that's interesting that's not a that's not a reason most people would have done a podcast <laughs> yeah. yeah true good that's point cool. <laughs> Things to be crazy in like thirty years, whenever we're all old, because we're all like we're all able to, it's like our grandparents couldn't. They could take weak ass photos and like just a couple of them, you know. Like even our parents, like my parents just got all their old videotapes, like colorized whenever they were kids, and they only have a couple of videos. Like I have three phones worth of pictures, you know, conversation phone, like. My kids will be able to, if I have kids, they'll be able to see, like, all that access. Like, they'll be able to see me being fucked up on my phone when I was, like, 16 years old. Like, it's a very different perspective on people. Like, because, like, I never saw my parents whenever they were young. Like, that was a whole different level connecting with them on that. Seeing pictures of your parents when they're, like, our age is fucking sick. It never really clicked. It really is. That, it's like, fucking... It's either, a rarity. It's rare. I have rare. a really cool picture of my parents from, like, the fucking... You can tell it's the, the heart of the 80s. My mom's got this big-ass perm. <sighs> fucking... My dad's got a fucking mullet. They're rocking a fucking Budweiser at a party. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm like... Well, yeah, that shit's cool. Like I that like that. Stuff's gonna I like be cool that a lot. Fuck. It's going to be so much more common, I feel like, yeah. seeing those kind of photos of your parents like dope. for our kids. And we really are the first generation to ever mm-hmm. be, I mean, just to be able to be seen at this age. To really authentically, to some degree, be seen what we were like. Yeah, your whole entire life. At least what we looked like. And it, depending on what we choose to show our children, yeah, your you know, what we were up to as well. But it'd still be cool to... Plug in your old iPhone on the charger. Broke the seal. Fucked up. <laughs> I got a piss too. I'll be right by. It, we'll we'll change whenever you whenever you go up. I'll go there. We'll yeah we'll or we'll just we'll just we'll swap out. That works. I'll hop in after you. <laughs> we all just are I'll sitting down here see. just chugging beer and have to piss. That was a mistake. No, but it really is. I I think about that all the time because hey, who knows? Like if this if this human race goes another ten generations. Ten generations from now, we'll have an idea, and we'll be like the first generation of like. We'll be the beginning of the records. Yeah, of that kind of stuff. Really, we <laughs> really be will be. All that information, all that data storage. Like kind of our parents, kind of our grandparents. They have but traces, like but it's not us for sure. But they have the thing is they have the physical evidence, you know, like they have the pictures, even like the videotapes, like they're on tapes, like they just got it now on their phones, like. Everything like we don't have real pictures. Like it's all on the internet. It's all on our phones. It's 
risk a point. Who knows? Like, a solar flare could happen, and then it all crashes. It all. And be crazy. Part of me wants to get it on hard copy just because of how vulnerable we really are. If the, I don't know. I don't know how probable it is that everything could crash, but I, it's possible. Like it's completely oh, possible. Yeah. I saw a video the other day that they uh, so you know like they have in like Antarctica they have a huge safe where they store like all as many seeds as they can just in case if the world ends they still have every variation of plants that they can grow i didn't know that yeah, they have a huge bank i love that you just told me that that makes cool. my day so much better but they just recently they put an open source code they save that into a database where the data can't get wiped so like if somehow all of technology was gone we'd still be able to create the computers we have today because we have the open source code that creates the internet Really? Mm-hmm. Or at least like that they have the they have the tools that they can plug into a computer with with basically power and it'll restart. So this is like very recent. Yeah, this was a couple weeks ago they put open source code in so that it's basically so it's safe forever. It's you know, it's Okay, let's say hypothetically everybody dies except us 3 and 10 other people and we're the three smartest of mm-hmm. of the 13 people alive. Are we going to be able to figure out how to create the yeah. internet again, though? Or you have to read a couple books, probably. Uh huh. But I'm sure. Th- I'm sure, th- with our understanding of like, we don't even have to really know what computers are made of, because we know what computers are. You know, like we can see pe- like we don't know how to put it together, but we can see these pieces and be like, okay, well, I know what this function is. You know, I can read a book and understand what I'm putting. Th- why these pieces are going together? Why I'm forming these things? But I'm sure it would be still pretty like pretty hard. But at least you know what you're doing, you know. Right, it's right. It's not like some foreign material that you have no idea what its purpose is. And you know it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. basically you know it's like you can do it before. Somebody's done it before. People and in it, way worse situations. And if the you in theory, like if, you, if all the libraries are still open or mm-hmm. whatever, like you, you could we, – we might be able to figure it out maybe. Who knows? I wonder what they would – who knows how that would work. All we got to worry about is that and continuing the species. Because the other ten, I didn't tell you guys this, but they're all women. All what? women. What? It's th- it's us three and all women. Ten women. So we just got to focus on continuing the species and mm, build the, the internet back up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are you going to the bathroom? Yeah, do you care? No, yeah, go Say, for sum it. me out. Sum me out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Tap in. Going. Yeah, what is it? Hour and fifty two. <laughs> cool. Not bad, not bad. Cool. I'm still going strong. Cool. If that's cool, if that's cool with you. I gotta piss like a racehorse. Yeah. yeah. I'm having a good time now. Yeah. It's just a regular conversation on microphone. Let's see uh K or S. What time is it? About ten, eleven. Ten thirty. Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. Holy shit. Yeah, we've been on here for a while. Wow. Yeah. Maddie's Blowing your shit up. Yeah. Why? Because I haven't texted her back, which is obvious. Did you not tell her you're doing this? No, she knew. But I didn't tell her it was going to be this long. I thought it was going to last shorter. I should have. I've you know. enjoyed my time. It's been cool. Yes. Yeah. It sucks because we don't have enough of like experience to be so focused on a topic that we can like really dive deep into something. You know what I mean? If he, I mean, I if he were to choose a topic, yeah. But I don't think that's what it's about, though. Yeah, no. I think it's more about it's conversation. conversation. Yeah. I think he kind of wants like a. He probably likes that it, like a diversity of topics come up mm. too. Just regular conversation. Well, especially when you're trying to build an audience too. If you can, like, have a super diverse. Yeah, have a little bit of everything. Yeah. Reach out to everybody. Yeah, exactly. That would be interesting, though, if we, like, maybe we could do that in the future. Come on. He picks, like, a one specific thing, and we try to remain focused on that. It'd be cool. Like, like to do that, but it's really hard to. Because we all have to know about it. Yeah, like, I don't want to. Sp- like, I definitely could it speak on stuff. It would have but to I be really something besides soccer, too, because yeah. that's really. <laughs> I, could p- I could speak on anything, but I don't really know shit about that stuff to really. It have could a be. Ba- well, have it a could valid be. Opinion. It could be an opinion question, though. Yeah, that's true. Not necessarily, like, a factual topic. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Hold up, let me text this girl. 
<laughs> this is my old lady. Yeah, we're going to have to call somebody. I'm about six deep. Six? That's pretty impressive. I'm only four. Yeah. Well, this is number number six, I should say. I thought it was ahead of you, so I was slowing down. I need to catch back I don't. Up. I don't drink and drive, so I will not be driving tonight. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Uh, no, this is cool, though. Yeah. yeah I would definitely do this again. It's okay. not... It just feels uncomfortable at first. I don't really it's feel it's super uncomfortable. I don't know, just... I'm sure if I didn't know you as well, I would have felt more yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah, that is true. All right. Check myself out. Hey, I guess I'll be out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, that... Um, switch up the conversation. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Sure. But um, that Barcelona poster, it's right out there. I forgot. I thought it was oh, in my really? room, because it was. Uh-huh. And then I took it off the wall and put it down here. I was telling Mason that I was like, well, whenever you're up there, when we first came down here and I was kind of like checking all the stuff out, I was like, this is oddly similar to the stuff I would hang up if this was my room. Like, this shit is cool. I, I like hang, it. I Thank you. I would hang this shit up. Like, this is tight. That's a, that's a high compliment, you yeah. know? Like, that's a higher compliment than you could take it because it's like, it's oh, like, I, would I put fuck with shit. you because we're similar, you yeah. know? Like, no, we have similar I would, I would interests. Put this shit up and I was like, damn it, I need to get some more fucking soccer posters. Like, this shit is tight. I fuck with it. I like it. I like it. It's cool. Yeah, I, um, I pretty much have no posters in my room. My room's completely bland. I just have a map of the world. They're all over the house, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I have them all over the house. Yeah. Like, all those paintings upstairs, if you saw any of yeah, those. Yeah, no, I saw all of them. They're tight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Those are, like, uh, I got into painting for, like, a month, so mm-hmm. those are, like, all mine. My point being is, like, I have nothing in my room, <laughs> but it's, excuse me, it's all, like, scattered throughout the house. Why is that? I'd rather just have the house have, like, a cool aesthetic than my room. Not in your room a lot? No, I'm in there a lot, but I just don't really care if my room looks cool versus, like, the rest of the house. I thought I wanted my room to look super cool this year, so, like, I, I'm, it looks cool as fuck, uh-huh. but I'm never in there. Oh, uh, God damn it. Why did I But do when this? you are. When I, yeah, when I am, it's cool. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> it's a good point, because when you're in your room, you're sleeping. Your eyes are closed. Dude, yeah. My, I'm, that's really what I'm... I do some homework in there, but really, it's mostly sleep. That's why I'm in there. And it's also like, whenever you guys have people over, which you guys seem to have a lot of people over, so that's it's like, thing too. this is Hayden's room. It's like, oh, he's got a dope setup. I yeah. like it. I like it up here. Well, I feel like I'm... Not in my room because we always have people over. Because there's always people over, so that's why. Good point. Hi. Oh, the dog came. Hi, buddy. You want me to bring him back upstairs? Oh, he's fine. As long as he, I just keep him. I always keep my leg up whenever he's here. Uh, Help, oh, puppers. I call every dog a puppy. Yeah, this Did you already pee? Yeah, so oh. fast. Yeah, that was incredibly yeah. quick. Yeah. Trying to make sure he doesn't unplug. <laughs> Careful. That's a super like very calm, chill out dog. Very trained. Like it's completely way different than my dog. My dog is not like that. I like how calm he is. Yeah, that's Dude, that's, that's how you can tell the difference between a good like a trained dog and a. That's the thing. My dog is not trained mm-hmm. at all. That's all. Like I mean, Roxy and Marley. We'd have my family, like my my mom and my dad's family over. And, yep. like, they would just totally chill out and not move. Like, you don't talk about Roxy. They just lay on the couch the whole time. Mm-hmm. And that's also just Roxy's personality. Mm-hmm. Doesn't do anything. I appreciate calm dogs, and I appreciate hyper dogs. It's fun every now and then to have a dog. Oh, he's wrapped up. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna, I'll get him out. Okay. I'll go walk her back up. He always does that during podcasts. He comes and just sits under the table. Probably just wondering why you've been gone for so long. Yeah, right. Where you been at? So how often do you do this? I'd say it's 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 rough. It's um it's cool that you're asking me like questions about the podcast, like on the pod. Um, is that okay? No, no, it's <laughs> totally cool. It's it's just like it, not many people do. So it's uh, um, yeah. but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Sure. Uh, I'd say like I like there'll be, I think it was. Not last week, but the other week I did five in one week, mm-hmm. and then I did I did like one, or maybe it was was it Saturday? Okay, maybe it was last week that I did that. I don't know. So it's pretty but often though. 
but then there'll be we like there'll be like three weeks where I don't do oh, a single yeah. one. So it's really whenever I can work it in my schedule. And honestly, I wanted to I wanted to set up a, a hobby that I thought was like going to be sustainable that I could I could do without getting bored of, and that would add like value to my life. And it's made me like more social. Dude, and it's cool because yeah. I've established myself at this point because it's like what, dude, this is, you have like a thou- almost two thousand subscribers, right? Yeah, it's like one thousand fifteen hundred or something. Yeah, something I think like that's that. What it said when I looked it up today, which I'm that's, definitely happy. That's with. something to be proud of, dude. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I'm definitely yeah. I'm excited for that. I'm happy that's about dope. that. I and then that. um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Um, I don't know. I'll always I have a platform to where I can like reach out to people that incentivizes them. Because I can kind of sell people on like the aspect of having an experience. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm in my life, I can challenge myself to not just be in my routine all the time. You know, of of going to work, coming home, maybe going to the gym. Autopilot. Yeah, right. Talking about earlier, dude. And then you get those few extra hours of whatever you want to do with your time, which would probably become pretty routine as well. But I at least get to challenge myself in the aspect that I can hit up people and have like yeah, a good yeah. friend at least like once a week, you know, I can, I can definitely, exactly. Mm-hmm. That is, we are an autopilot a lot. Yeah. A lot. Are you thinking about bringing up some of this stuff down to Europe with you? Bringing random people Dude. from a different country in the show? 100%. Dude, I was about to say you fucking better. Are you That'd thinking be about fucking awesome. bringing this stuff or are you going to bring like your old setup with like no. the microphone and the, no, like no to this or no to the, this is just unfortunate. Like, that takes this ho- takes like that whole crate. Like tomorrow we're doing one at uh, as I told you guys before, oh, we're doing Bruco, it at, like yeah. Bruco. So like I'm gonna have to transport everything, and it's yeah. just it's just too much. Well, the stuff you used before worked. I mean, like it obviously is clearly like a step up, but it really wasn't terrible. Hundred percent. Like your old microphone was not that bad. It wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. There's definitely and a difference, but it's I think not. I'm gonna do that in my phone. And a worst case scenario would be just that camera. So it'd be that, and then I'm a little like recorder that's <coughs> like that big. As long as it's like the content's cool, you don't, you don't gotta worry that's about it. Hundred yeah. percent. As long as people yeah. can hear what you're saying, have a decent that's video point, quality, right? then yeah, it's people want to hear. But not really like no, it's, this isn't like a. You know, like a National Geographic show. You don't gotta have the we were talking, just. would you ever, like, do a thing where, like, somebody comes on and you, like, choose a specific topic and that's all you talk about? If they were an expert in it, for sure. Okay. For sure. Yeah. You know, like, if somebody was, like, an author on this book and, I don't know, if they were an anthropologist, then let's talk about Something anthropology. Something they're passionate about. I'm sure there's probably, like, Elon Musk talk. I mean... He's a one, but he has so much stuff to talk about. But it's what he's passionate about. It's what he's mastered. Exactly. He's yeah. Lot, he's got a lot to speak. On. I mean, he's an incredible person to listen to too. You don't get. I mean, there's a lot of things you can be mastered in. Hard to follow. But even like <laughs> somebody who's very specialized, like Elon Musk, I, I wouldn't be restrained What's to just topic? talking about Tesla, just talking yeah. about this, just talking That's about true. this. Like it'd be an open conversation, but it would probably be dominated on what he kind of specializes in which is a lot Dude, of shit yeah right. freaking, like you can't hold it down to one thing it's a lot of different shit you made like a flamethrower for his company just for like i forgot just, about that just, just for the fuck of it yeah, the boring company like, the yeah. boring company yeah she's like we're just gonna do this i think this would be cool <laughs> that's he awesome. is so god damn it god damn it he's cool he's he a cool guy so cool he's like if i could put myself in a practical like things that i think would be cool to do but i probably would never do because it's just not Everything I enjoy, that's probably what I would like. A really cool thing that I would be really interested in is what he does. He's so he's so cool, but we don't we're not smart enough to even be that cool. Well, I, can't, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't hang or grind like that. I don't want to hang or grind. Like uh, I don't want to be that into that kind of stuff because it's oh, really yeah, it's yeah. really intense. But I think it's really well, yeah, really it's really his, cool. It's his life. Yeah. yeah. Like I like that's it's cool from our perspective. I respect it a lot. I guess I idolize it. You have to. You guys heard about the thing where he wanted to, uh, like, build tunnels under the city of, like, Los Angeles and make that, like, their new highway system? Mm-hmm. Did, did the like Boron Company? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you that, like, a competition every year where they have all the high schools and either high schools or colleges in California. Do they have, like, their test run or whatever? And each, like, place has got to build their own, like, pod or whatever because it's, you know, it's 
airtight so you can go faster, but it's like a competition whoever builds the best pod. It's like a sponsor's like, or like they'll produce their product. That is so like smart. They'll work with, yeah, like mm-hmm. with that kind of stuff. But like they're like high school or college kids like designing these things that are, I mean, it's pretty advanced shit, you know, um, air seal tube that deals with magnetics and all kind of like, <laughs> it's very specific and crazy stuff and technology that. It's so cool that he's creating some kind of program that the younger generation can continue because that's that's way more sustainable the longevity of that it's just more practical yeah, i remember him talking about it on joe rogan's podcast too they like they think they just decided one day that they wanted to try it and they got a couple dump truck or like the you know like the trucks to scoop up dirt with i think they spent like a week just like digging a huge ass hole in the ground that's just how they started. Like they just made an idea, decided that they were gonna follow it, and they dug a hole, started from there. That's, That's the hilarious. thing, dude. He he thinks of some shit, and he is not afraid to one say it, and two just fucking well, start doing he's it. He's got the money, like, dude. He's got the money to. That's a big part of it too. But he's still, got the like, mind. what's the phrase? Uh, s- scared money don't make money. I've never heard that before. Yeah, what does money, that mean? Or, so like, obviously. A lot of the shit that, like, he thinks about and a lot of the stuff he talks about, like, people are, like, pretty skeptical of, but he does it anyway. Because he knows That type of thing. He thinks about it in, like, the most logical way. Like, what would yeah. be the best way to do this? Well, you can't – you can keep building up, but it's expensive. You can – like, the ground is already, like, structured. You just got to dig the space out. It's just, like, that seems way more reasonable to be underground. You can go as deep as you want. There's no limit to it. So he's yeah. just like, we're gonna build, we're gonna build fucking tunnels, like we're gonna do this. A scared money don't make money is yeah. like, um, basically it's saying you have to take a risk at some point to be profitable. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So like a lot of like a lot of the stuff he does, like a rocket that can go up into the sky and then come back down as well. Like pretty a lot, fucking a lot, risky. A lot of people would think like, bro, why would you invest money into that? It's like that's not shit. reasonable. That's a lot of risk. Now Tesla, Tesla is like potentially going to be the biggest company of all time. Well, they're leading the so. way. The f- they're, they made every other car, car company change the way they were designing exactly, their cars. Yeah. And they so. released the patents. Hmm. And Dude, that's what. That's what's going to make that motherfucker a lot of money. Is patents. Did like a lot. And the reason he ma- the reason he said that he made that car too is just because it wasn't. He was trying to, you know, save cl- like global warming. He's like, what is to the show mo- other people yeah. how to do it? Well, he's just like, I want to make the most fun car like that I could possibly think of. Like when you're driving, you spend a shit ton of time driving. You want to ex- enjoy every moment of that. So he's like, I'm gonna make the best car for doing that. Make it cheap. You know, they put video games in the car. You can play when it's parked. It auto drives. Like that is the best ride you can get, and that's what he designed it to be. Yeah, he's an interesting person. Optimizing cool transportation, guy. I like it. Yeah. Also, we were talking about it earlier. He's like impossible to follow, though. Yeah, he just. Y- you've off. listened to like the. The podcast you have with Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. Super hard, super hard to follow. Like, it's pretty sporadic, like all over the place. Absolutely. We were saying like how it's like. It's obvious that he operates on a different wavelength than everybody else, for sure. Oh, hundred percent, a hundred percent. You could, yeah, you could tell his mind works. You could kind of – what's the cool thing about podcasts? You could – just through a conversation, you could really learn a lot about who that actual person is. I like it. And That's cool. you realize how different Elon Musk is wired versus the average human. It's super different. That's why it's hard for us to follow him because mm-hmm. it's like just he's – Just different brain, like – who knows what's going on in there, dude? That part in that podcast, whenever he talks about turning it on, he's like, oh, what it, he's like, oh, I don't even remember what he, what he talks about. It's, exactly. It's, it's very hard to articulate because he, <laughs> like, <laughs> it really is. It's yeah. difficult. <laughs> it's hard. It's he's, hard. he talks about something relating to, like, Joe Rogan says something relating to have you ever tried to turn it off like that obsessive thing oh yeah, oh, yeah. Like, like that his, crazy his yeah, 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 thoughts yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever like uh-huh. he's always thinking of new ideas or he's whatever. talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. oh he's like have you ever fucked around meditation and he's like yeah i've tried it but it's hard and and then joe rogan talks about 
well, have you ever tried to like turn that thing off, like that obsessive oh, side? Yeah, yeah. Where he's and always like thinking. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, once you turn it on, it's hard to turn off. And he talks about trying to turn it off, mm-hmm. but you can tell he he has that crazy side to him, and but it's like a genius kind of crazy. It's really interesting. Do you meditate? I've tried. I've tried. My junior year, I like messed around with it a little bit, and. Like most people, I got frustrated because I was not good at it whatsoever, and then it takes a gave lot of up. Time. That's what I hear. I, I I don't know, but yeah, it take. I just I've heard that it takes a lot of time. I've tried it too. It's hard. I'm pretty emotionally flat, so it, I didn't get much of a purpose out of it. I guess I don't have. I can see that. Like you know, you're supposed to sit there and like kind of absorb your emotions. I feel like at least with mindfulness meditation. You know, like, reflect on the feelings it gave you. But, like, I don't feel like I don't really have strong emotions, so it was hard for me to find that source. The way I've seen it is it's supposed to be more like nothing. Yeah. Mm. Like, like mind clearing. Like, you're, like, being, the way I've tried it at least is you're supposed to just be 100% present in, like, the exact moment in time and not thinking about anything else. <laughs> See, the... Did you read that book I gave you, right? The no, I haven't got why, it yet. Why Buddhism is I true. Got oh, I, g- no, I, I got, got it yet. back. But he talks about like mindfulness meditation, which that's what you were doing, wasn't it? When you were meditating, were you just doing kind of like blank, empty mind too? Pretty much, yeah. Trying to clear your mind, that's just what focusing I on the breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Cause the mindfulness, like the way he describes it, is like, one, if like he was feeling like really emotional about something, he would sit there and just like embrace the feeling and like that anger is more what you know motion as much as he could until it would feel numb like then you really think about it you sit there and try to like dive into why you feel that way but in like a meditation state i guess but like you do that and then i don't know but it was it was never like keeping your mind blank like you're you're meditating but through your like thoughts i guess you're cleaning your head out going through like your emotions understanding why like seeing what's already in there yeah, like just basically diving into why you think the way you do and understanding your own thought processes. I I definitely explored that mm-hmm. as well. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Do you think of pictures? Do you think in mm-hmm. in words? It's and hard to think about what you're thinking. A hundred percent. So that is really interesting. I've explored that in the past couple of years for sure. Thinking about the way you're thinking. It's wild because you only have your mind. You're limited to that. You're very limited to that. Once you once you actually start thinking about what you're thinking, though, it's really weird. Like I think the weird thing is, is that we've been alive for 20 years and I don't think about myself much. But over like, cause really? you know, it's a pretty busy 20. Like you know, like I o- understand myself, but like I've never really been like alone for long periods of time, like not around people. But like when you get older, especially like I feel like when you're older, older. It's a lot of time, like, just kind of with you or your significant, like, you know, because we've only been alive for 20 years, you know, if we live to our full age, that's another, you know, 40 or 50 years, that's one third of our lifetime, and it's not going to be in high school or college or on other people, it's going to be work and at home with your family, you know, it's a lot of, I guess, alone time, I don't yeah. know, getting in your own head. Definitely getting in your own head. More time to focus on things like mm-hmm. meditation. Right now, that's what I kind of came to is everything's so sporadic right now. Like I don't, I used to read a lot, mm-hmm. but it took a lot of the sacrifice of being like isolation and and just not spending your free time on isolation going out with hard. friends and hanging out with your friends all yeah. the time. And that I I don't read, and I kind of gave up on meditation for those reasons. But once my lifestyle changes in like two three weeks. I, I plan to both of those things, like give it a go again. Gives you a hobby, sure. gives you a purpose, something to do, I feel like, drives you a bit. Because that's what we do with, I feel like that's what college is to us. Like going to class, graduating is what like kind of ke- keeps you going, I guess, I don't know. That like it's is. the end goal. Mm, yeah, like. That, you, that is us yeah, right like, now, is like college. That's, that's what I'm focused on, like that's, and like, that's all I can do, I guess. I guess so you don't have like, th- not necessarily thinking about other stuff all the time. Well, like when you're, w- yeah. when you're working too, it's just the nine to five. You're not like. Working. I like working for that reason. Yeah, though. It's, it's not nice. like there's nothing else going on after work. Exactly. Which is mm-hmm. like the big alone time thing. Like, 
don't know. I've never spent probably more than a day by myself, if that. I don't like being. Do you like being by yourself? I I mean I enjoy being around myself, but. Do you? Know. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Like, I'm do you prefer it or? Say I'm primarily an extrovert, but I have my days where I prefer being alone too. It depends on the day. Uh, oh, most of the time, I'm I'm definitely more of an extrovert for sure. Yeah. But it's um, I realized a few years back that I wasn't very comfortable being alone. So my second semester of junior year, I literally <laughs> you just by like yourself, right? I lived by myself and yeah. I just spent all my time alone. Like I, I got like straight A's that semester. I read like sixteen books. I that's when I got into painting. I, I was listening to a lot of podcasts. Like pretty much my only goal was to improve myself, and I had like, and I I was I was working out a lot. I made a lot of like progress in the gym, um, like really just progress upon me. Like everything was focused on like improving me, but it came at the social sacrifice. Like I didn't hang oh, with I friends. Bet. I literally just gave up friends to work on myself. It was like a very extreme mentality. Why'd you but, decide to do it? I well my. Honestly, my uncle passing away was part of it, and like that put me in a weird trade of thought. But I also just kind of I was like, this is good. this is an opportunity. Like I'm gonna live with people next semester. I'm gonna be very oh, social. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll have three roommates. They're all social dudes. We'll probably be partying. But like, what if I took one like just just a few weeks off of being like social, like I usually am, and just really focused on myself and like thought about the world and just improve myself. The outcome. I, I improved significantly, but for the first time in my life, I had social anxiety. Dude. Like, I felt uncomfortable oh, being you never, around people you, after that. You never had that before? Not really. Really? No. It, it, if, it, if I did, it was minor, but, like, just going just going out and being around people, I felt uncomfortable after that. Like, being in uh, isolation that long. And, like, obviously, I was going to my classes, so I saw people there, but, like, I didn't. Well, you're not talking to them or anything. No, so not there. really. Yeah. Not really. Like I wasn't really interacting with humans besides three friends that semester. Dude, I appreciate that. It was worth it. Oh yeah, I'm like it was. In a way, it was my favorite semester of college, but in a way, it sucked. It, it sucked. Yeah, I feel it, that. It was pros and cons to it, and the last month was hard. But I like told myself I was gonna pull through because I knew I was gonna go back to being like the same it outgoing the extroverted yeah just imagine living your whole life like that like get or not even get out of college like graduating high school and then you're just living in an apartment by yourself working or going to school and like that's just it you know like that would be i know it's different we're never by ourselves now so i guess it's flip-flopped we're extremely social down here what'd you take from that from that semester i don't know like yeah this might sound really cynical but all you have in this world is you, so I, I wanted to get comfortable being alone, uh, mm -hmm. comfortable with myself, uh, comfortable being able to, like, overlook social – not that people are distracting, but, like, social distractions. And if I – to, like, have the discipline to say no to that and then be able to focus on, like, just me, like, just me and, and my progress. And also I – around the same time like the semester before i was starting to dabble into like self-improvement and then i was like what if i just go really hard with this yeah like really try to improve myself so i yeah. i went from like motivational speakers and then i kind of realized like some of them are kind of full of shit and a lot of them are trying to make yeah, a yeah, buck yeah, off yeah, of yeah. feeding it's off of people's fears insecurities yeah, yeah. so then i uh then i got into more like seeking knowledge and in I guess you'd say like wisdom. I think knowledge is more accurate of a word, but kind of like seeking that and, and seeking like my genuine curiosities. And I also discovered Joe Rogan that semester. So then I got obsessed with him, and I, that's when I like I would just paint and just listen to podcasts. And um, I don't know, just kind of really just like existentially figuring out like who I was and like who I wanted to be, instead of um, instead of just living like hedonistically and focusing on like partying all the time and pleasure and girls and uh, like just things that are awesome, but like For kind of a distraction man. from becoming the more than who you could world. be. Yeah. It's like instant pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Your whole life can't away from be that. going just getting fucked up and drinking and going to strip clubs and taking like, I, you know what I mean, 
I've realized that I enjoy, like, I enjoy, like, drinking and stuff like that. But I think I enjoy, like, like talking to people while I'm doing it mm-hmm. more than, like, the actual, Get like, fucked up. getting fucked up or whatever. I mean, it is fun. I every think I just like then. being with the people. Like, it's cool. And the people yeah. don't make you hungover. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> At least do something constructive if you're going to be in getting intoxicated mm-hmm. instead of doing stupid shit and getting yourself in trouble. Great point. I I like the like the atmosphere more, you know, like the I don't know. It's I more agree. genuine. You don't really meet a lot of genuine people going out and doing that kind of stuff. You don't really get to know people either. It's the big that con. is true too. I guess it's different when you actually know who a person is and you understand what they like. You don't even have to vibe with them. You just got to know. It's different when you know who somebody is and understand why they who who they are why why they are who that you, know, you don't want to get them you know what I'm saying like that. Hundred percent. I can't imagine living by myself for a whole semester. That'd be hard. I would really like to do it. I think. I'm oh, sure it was. Like I'm sure it's super beneficial. I think it's it a challenge. Be, it would be really really hard for me though. Yeah. Really hard. Well, I I feel like you really need to focus. And if you, if you, like, I, I, it's not like you, like, if you live alone, you have to be in solitude, but I, like, told myself I was going to do that. Well, that that was the goal, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Also, to see if I could do it. And the last month was hard. It was hard. How was, like, growing up as a single child? Because I'm sure that was probably, yeah, pretty lonely. Um, at least. Yeah, I guess. I don't don't think I realized it at the time. Because it's all you knew. Because it's all I knew, but yeah, looking back, it definitely fucking was for sure like because i didn't because you know when you're younger you don't know that it's like normal or you're like just being a kid you're just well being your also you don't know it's like normal to like talk to your parents about like normal shit like mm-hmm. you know for like while you're growing up for the longest time you're just like oh these are the people that like tell me what to do and stuff mm-hmm. you know so it was kind of hard like not having like somebody else s- somebody else to like actually fucking talk to for a while but then i got older and realized that that's what parents are for so Mm -hmm. it it was better but a lot of people have like a brother and sister for that you know it's a great point to have those real conversations but it took me a while to realize that i could have real conversations with my mom and my dad i didn't even realize that it takes a while college is a big transition of that too oh it wasn't until i was like 17 18 that I started realizing that. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize I could talk to my brother like that till I was like eighteen. I don't think we yeah. were friends till he was in high school. Like, yeah. I don't think I ever like even talked to him till I was like, <laughs> because I'd see him at family. Like, we'd hang out when we were at like Thanksgiving and stuff, but I never saw him at home. Really? So it was weird. Like, I literally did never talk to him until. Do you think it's hard to school. just just hard to relate with him? We just didn't have. We'd always fight, and we didn't have anything in common. I asked him to come outside with me and Kushball one night. And he seems super similar to you. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> you guys probably know better than I do, like, you know our personalities in public, but I vibe, I mean, more now than I did back then. Like, I'm pretty chill. I don't know. He's a really cool dude when he came down and 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 that's it that's a bash on brennan right now but he was kind of a bitch whenever we were younger yeah he He was was kind of a pussy he was a a tattletale type yeah he's good mainly the crying no i used to i I used to be like outspoken about um about this i don't know if i ever told you this i probably told you this (laughs) and i love brennan now so i'm gonna i'm gonna throw that out there i think brennan's awesome i think he's very mature for his age he's just yeah yeah i felt like i was he came in down and visited, right? The, it's yeah. Brennan is the dude that I know, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. He's super mature. He felt like he it was like one of our friends. Absolutely, really. yeah. Very calm too. Yeah. What were you saying though? Uh, so back when he was in probably like fourth, fifth grade, I used to tell my parents and grandparents, Brennan's gonna be gay. Brennan's <laughs> gonna be gay. Like I literally <laughs> thought Brennan was going to be Just gay to for the longest time. That's funny as fuck. It's funny. Yeah. Just people change. Like people always say, I don't. I don't agree with this at all. Like. A lot of people say that modern psychology suggests that the first seven years of your life are fundamentally who you are, right. and you never really change beyond that. I think that's bullshit. I think people change so much. I think it's. Or yeah, go ahead, you uh, go first. The first seven years of my life definitely dictated who I was up until I was like sixteen. Yeah, till freedom hit. I'll me. say that. 
Good point. Until freedom. Then you make your own choices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you so. really decide who you are. Exactly. I think it's up to the person as much yeah. as it is to the environment. But, like, I still think... 100%. It still stems, like... I think it's hard, Brennan, though. Yeah. Like, I think Brennan's more emotional just in general as a person. But I think that stemmed from him being like that as a kid. You know, like, he was upset a lot. He doesn't do that now, but I can tell he's more emotional to situations than I ever am. Like, he, he gets heated up way faster than I ever do. Which there are benefits to that, honestly. There are benefits to that. There are benefits to being more, like, pragmatic as well. Yeah, yeah I wish I had more emotions towards that <laughs> sometimes. I could You're not an angry person at all. I don't. I, don't I like it. I was describing Mason to my, my roommate before he came over. I was like, he's very, very, very stable. <laughs> like, just dude. very stable. That's why I like being around Mason, because it keeps me, like, I'm very opposite, like, Anytime I feel an emotion, it's, like, to the fucking, like, the highest degree, you know? It's like, I'm just going to go hang out with Mason, and, and don't bring me down. And normal ass dude. <laughs> <That's pretty> <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. My <laughs> pH is too high. I need to come back down yeah. to baseline. <laughs> nah. You know what I'm <laughs> saying, Neutral, though? neutral. Like, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, Mason's, like, more neutral than I am, for sure. Like, when I feel, like, happy, like, it's, like, 10. I feel sad, like it's level ten. I feel like Mason's always at like a six, no matter I what. See, yeah, I wish I, th- I wish <laughs> I experienced those tens. Yeah, you know. there's a there's a personality model, and see, like you know, like the Myers Briggs. Mm-hmm. So there's there's something similar to that called the Big Five, which a lot of social psychologists consider to be significantly more accurate, like the the most accurate personality test. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess you'd say on the market. But I think there's something called neuroticism, which I would almost describe as receptivity to negative emotions. Mm-hmm. And I bet you would – and that's a very – if you're low in that, it's a very high indicator of success because it kind of implies that you're able to stay determined and in it the implies face, like, like – Control your emotions. Resilience. And uh, yeah, 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 control yeah. control your emotions in like tough times. Well, but the, that's an indicator of success for that reason – but I think you would be like crazy low. Oh, man. dude! Like oh, that's yeah. definitely a strength like, of yours for that, sure. Though, for sure, he would for sure. Half of that stuff that yeah. I think about is literally from that why Buddhism is true book. It's just like we, I think I've told you talked about this before with you. Is like the emotions we have were not evolved for today's world. Like why do you need rage? Why do you, why why in today's society with the technology we have, why do you feel the need to kill somebody over something? Like, wha- there's no there's no excuse to do bad things because we're intelligent enough. But he's like... A fantastic yeah. point. But he's like, like, but back then, you know, when we were hunters and gatherers, you know, you're, you're trying, like, you know, genetically, like, evolution, like, you're designed to pass on your genes. So, no, like, you need to get angry. If somebody steals your wife, you need to be pissed off so you can go fight back and get your wife back and get your genes pass on your genes to the next generation. It's like back then it was useful. You know, it kept you alive. It kept you going. You know, there was a purpose for it. But now, like, it's not... Like, there's no reason for me to get pissed off at stuff because in the big picture, like, a lot of stuff that people get upset about is insignificant. And in three days, that's never going to be thought of again. But So, like, why would you get upset about that if it's not... If it's not important to you, why does it matter? I guess, but it's a negative look, and things can still care. But like in the big picture, I don't know. That book was very interesting when it talked about emotions. I don't know. It's it just interesting. Kinda neutral, ne- like, neutralizes it, I guess. Because like you, my uh, my understanding, you don't meditate, right? I do not meditate. But no. you're still like that's mindfulness. Like that's okay. literally mindfulness that you're talking mm-hmm. about, controlling your emotions before mm-hmm. acting on them, like thinking thinking it through before oh. just like responding. Just seems the most. I don't know. I just. I think too logically for myself to the point where I just. It's detrimental. But I think I get it from my dad. <laughs> I think my dad's the same way. I think you'd probably agree. He's pretty. One hundred percent. He's a he's a flat line like I am. Like just kind of. Rides along with the wave, you know. You Always guys are very similar intelligences, both of you, and I, I consider you both to be like incredibly smart, and in I'm both of like your smart. own. I want to be incredible. <laughs> him, him and his dad. Is mm. that what you're saying? Both in like a very similar kind of way, like a very really? unique way that I haven't met too many people that are like that way. Oh yeah, 
Mason thinks in a definitely a different way than I do. I like it. Yeah, I wish it was it's more. good to surround yourself with people that think differently than you. For sure. That's the big, yeah. I love having Learn their like strengths that. and kind of how they operate a oh. little bit more. Dude, I've learned a lot from Mason, for sure. It gives you tolerance for other people. You know, you understand how other people, I don't, like. Can I hit that by chance? Appreciate it helps you relate, <laughs> I think, too. Like Sorry, you just pulled it out and I'm already fucking. <laughs> no, you've been drinking. But, uh, no, you're fine. You're yeah. fine. <laughs> and, like, you embrace every different person there is. No matter who you ever meet, you can at least talk to them. Or you can at least understand where they're coming from. And I think that means more than any like being able to like understand somebody else. Like that's intelligence, being able to listen and understand somebody else's perspective. Emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, yeah. Like Cause that way we can talk and discuss and grow from there, you know, like you take the opportunity to discuss and that could be a title of the podcast, Emotional Intelligence. Emotional Intelligence. Just emotional intelligence. Yeah, that'd be tight. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of my main goals with this is to become a better listener, honestly. Oh, really? I I, uh, I watched – I don't know how seri- – I okay, you're going to have to explain it to me. I watched your uh, one of the clips you were talking about earlier about uh, your like being an alpha male or whatever. Oh, is it my solo podcast? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was making fun of an old roommate that was okay. like obsessed was say, with this dominance. Does, this does not seem like Jordan. No, at I was being all. so sarcastic in that. <laughs> I was being so sarcastic like, in that. I don't give a fuck what you say. <laughs> <laughs> fuck other funny. people's opinions. I don't care what you have to say because I'm right. I'm right, yeah. and you're wrong. And I, if you don't, if you disagree with me, then I'll just dominate you. Yeah. I will hegemonically find a way to assert my dominance. No, yeah, that's what you were saying. I was like, God damn, I guess I did. No Jordan as well. As <laughs> that was funny though. It's I, I love that kind of sarcasm. Like it's uh it's very conceptual. It's like you're you understand a concept so well that you're able to like play make from the other it. side oh, and make fun sure. of it so much. I do that all the time, all the time. Cause like, a, have you ever like looked into like pickup, like picking up girls or like there's like a whole subculture on YouTube and I'm sure on Reddit. I've and seen them, but I'm like. I feel like if I click on it, then I failed. So <laughs> yeah, I, good point. I, if I click on a video that's like, how to get girls, it's like, god damn, I really fucked up. <laughs> I'm clicking on these goddamn videos by <laughs> girls. That's a great point. That is great no, I know point. what you're talking about, though. Yeah, I've seen them. And it, it, the, the, they always bring up like the alpha male mentality, and I agree with it to an extent, but it's also like flawed in a lot of ways, too. Oh, we got two of them. Yeah, why not? Why not? Probably the exact same flavor. I haven't hit one of those in so long, and I, I've always told Mason that I hate those. I don't know why I felt the need to hit that. Oh, you had a few beers. That's yeah. probably why. <laughs> Doing your first beers. podcast. That's yeah. probably why. It's part of the experience. Part of the experience. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. They just like they they always talk about being like alpha and like how girls are attracted to that, which is yes, it's true. <laughs> But so many people misinterpret that of just being a fucking asshole. dick, just like, an and Confident. just asserting You're dominance. Like, I'm gonna stare you right in the eye and just send vibes that <laughs> I'm fucking better than you. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the video you watched earlier. Yeah, that's funny. I enjoyed those. I I haven't done that in like close to a year. Close so to you, a year. You, you just sit. You take a fucking mic and you just sit in front of it and you just talk. Yeah, and I'm usually like very sarcastic on what literally just anything that pops it into my head. I have to be in a certain mood. I'm not really in the mood right now, but like like yesterday, I was totally in that mood, like where I'm like kind of uppity, just kind of messing with people. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, drank like some that. coffee yesterday. Like it, it, I usually drink some stimulants and like just to keep my mind flowing a little Dude, bit. Yeah, I feel that. I'm definitely like. Are you up more days than other days? I feel like some days I'm like super, super energetic and want to do everything. Hundred yeah. percent. Yesterday I was going, I was going, I was going, and then today, like I didn't work out today, so yeah, I was, yeah. and I, I think that affects it a lot, at least for me personally. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was feeling more like, more like my chill side. Like mm-hmm. I feel more like relaxed I today. Sit down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which like sometimes I get concerned before podcasts. Like I feel like I need to be like in that uppity mood to do podcasts not necessarily yeah yeah yeah, really not well what do you think since you're the one that does all the podcasts i think there are pros and cons to both i don't know i think a good conversation can be stimulating 
you know, like if you're really into it, it'll, like it'll, the gym. it'll wake you up. Yeah. yeah. It'll, it's just a mental stimulation. You know, this like is woking me up. I feel like 45 minutes into this, I've really started to wake up. I like it. Just talking. That's what I was talking. That w- that's kind of what I was getting at earlier about like how if somebody from like a long time ago was to look at this, like that they, they probably were just more stimulated back then because they had conversations like this a lot that's what they did what it, like you know if you like i work with old people and i gotta use google maps to go everywhere like there'll be addresses 45 minutes away from where i'm at and they know exactly how to get there on the roads like that they absorbed all of that information instead of having a phone like we do like all that stuff was in their head like they know people they know, like just random ass fucking people that you have no idea how they like that they just heard names. You know, we think talk. we know, but like our it's our phone that knows. That's why we're. That's where the entitlement probably comes from, that they get pissed about. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast yesterday, and there's this guy named Graham Hancock, and he's he's y- a crazy motherfucker. He's fucking awesome. I love that guy. He's he, changed the way. He, like, he's the I'm, one that explores like consciousness quite a bit, right? Consciousness and also ancient civilizations. Like he's an archaeologist. Archeo- yeah, 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 I'm not yeah. saying that word correctly. Archae archaeologist. Ar- archaeologist. Archaeologist. Okay. Archaeologist, yeah. I said it earlier in the podcast. I couldn't say it then. Anyway, um, yeah, he he explores like ancient ancient civilizations and kind of critiques modern society, mm-hmm. especially because we we whenever you say like Aboriginal people or if you're talking about hunter gatherers or if you're talking about uh, Neanderthals or something like that, you kind of think that those people are all not grouped together, but they're all kind of stupid. Like they're like lesser than us. They're, they're below modern civilization, but they're also they're not highly intelligent people. They're very intelligent people. Like just imagine what we'd be like if we didn't have the stuff we had. Like if you grew up with nothing, we'd probably be just like them, you know, Building shit out of like probably would know how to build shit out of wood. Like you would know how to you're do for, anything. You're forced to. That's yeah. the thing. He was saying if the apocalypse if the apocalypse came or like some We'd catastrophic fucked. event, we're fucked. The hunter gatherers are probably the ones that are going yes. to survive. And he yes. also he suggests that in Egypt, I believe it was Egypt, or there's there's this uh, ancient ruins that he talks that he talks about called Gobekli Tepe, which is in modern day Turkey, and he suggests that. Pretty much at, at some point, I, I I can't recall exactly like what point in human history this was, but a ad, an advanced civilization um, moved on and tried to continue the species with hunter gatherers because they were the most likely to succeed, but also to like distill advanced society into them. If that if I'm not I'm not or I'm not expressing that like. As accurately as I should, but we would be fucked though if yeah. some sort of apoc- apocalyptic event was to happen. I'd be so fucked. I'd be willing to bet that more people, uh, at least as many people, would die from whatever event that is, as like to compared to people that people mm-hmm. like would die from not knowing what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like the, they would probably equal out because people, oh. like just as many people, would die from not knowing how to survive without That's not resources. What I thought you were saying at compared first. to. Like the equivalent the actual to disease or whatever, disease or uh, whatever event happens, it pr- like is, I mean, I mean, I'm sure it's different. In other like we're pretty blessed here. We don't have to do like we don't have to know that stuff. There's probably a lot of countries like Africa where people are just not like they probably wouldn't even be affected by that stuff because they already know like mm-hmm. they're not connected to the world like that, or they've already been exposed mm-hmm. to. Well, experience. they know how to live in the bare minimum of everything, and we are have a surplus of everything. Yeah, it, it's kind of scary to think about, like, if, like, if something like that were to happen, and we are just have, for some reason, we had to, like, abandon technology, it would not go well at all. Nope. There would be a select group of people that were fine, for sure. Going back to what Mason mm-hmm. said, like, hunter-gatherers, people that hey, are Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, it really goes back to dependency. Dependency on civilization, upon technology. Well, like there's that thing, like there's a thing too, where people like they live in the cities, and like people complain of like I understand that there's animal cruelty when it comes to like harvesting animals, like the way they do it, but 
Like people think that animals getting killed is wrong, just in general. But like animals, like predators in general, are fucking ruthless. Like lions will tear apart a fucking zebra without any second thought. Like that's yeah. a natural. It's fucked up, but it's like it's natural. Like that's and I mean we are still animals. And people say are we better than that? But I mean like. Why should we be? Yeah. We figured out a way to mass produce. Yeah, I mean, there's always better steps you can take, but like we are like it's like we're like we are animals. There are ani- like people things get destroyed by other animals all the time. That's why I've always thought it's super weird the way that we treat dogs. Like the way that like we treat dogs like they're people. Yeah, like another like, You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people treat their dog like it's a fucking, like, a family member. That's what it feels but it's like. it's an animal. Like, it's still an animal. It's not a human. It's like talking to dogs as if we understand. Or as if or they, they understand. understand. They don't. They don't understand what we're they saying. Probably get, they probably, after years and years of living with people, they probably understand certain, like, actions and Go movements. Go outside. But that's, like behavioral stuff that they like that's if they grew up with a dog mo- like a with the mother of the dog they would just learn that behavior traits just in those surrounding environments absolutely but it's not something that naturally comes to them unless they're bred to be that way I feel like, like dogs understand tone mm-hmm. like the tone of yeah. no no I th- come here come here I think it's like a I don't know I was gonna say it's a pitch thing but it must not be because, like, the super high dog whistle, they don't like. But, like, the, come here, come here, as opposed to no. I'm sure they, so like. So, no, it's not a pitch thing, then. I'm sure, I mean, they're wild. Like, I mean, they are wild animals. I'm sure they, like, their bodies, their brains know how to recognize, like, aggressive behavior. Like, when they're getting yeah. yelled at, I'm sure that comes off as aggressive and dominant. Because, I mean, they have alpha wolves. Like, that's how they, or alpha dogs, I guess. Like, they follow a leader naturally. Yeah, I but yeah, I was going off like you, like you're talking about like how, like we're animals too. Yeah, like uh, we're really what we are, just animals. But we're we like we have crazy ass technology. Yeah, but a lot of people like I don't know the way we treat dogs. You would think they were people yeah. too, you know. And <laughs> people have morals when it comes to technology. Live in like cities like that. But if everything was gone in an instant, they would be. They would not give a shit about what a cow's doing, like if they needed to move. You know what? I mean? like exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Great like point. Yeah. But what's the difference between a cow and a dog? Yeah, that's like what I'm saying. There's, there's, what's? The, I mean, this is a weird fuck. Like, it depends on how you value intelligence, but like, what's the big difference between a, like a human and any other animal? Exactly. Like, like I, I guess if you value consciousness and intelligence, then that's one thing. But in the end, we are. Or the same as all of them. Yeah, we're just a species of some sort of evolution that designed us to be this way, just as everything else is on the planet. It's a great point. We see ourselves as separate. We're not. We're not. <laughs> you go in the wild without technology, you're, you're fucking fucked. Africa, you're getting fucked up. Like yeah. You really, you really think yeah. a lion in fucking Africa is going to see you as separate? No. <laughs> they don't give a shit. You're yeah. potential prey at that point. Yeah. That's where ethical shit gets weird. That's that's kind of the thing that I was thinking about, like with the, with Neuralink, or whatever. It's like we're removing ourselves so far from what is actually like real. That's what I'm saying. Like the next step. Like what do you can like what is does human hev- evolution have to be, genetic, or can we design it our own ways as our purpose to become more ever internal almost, in terms of memory and consciousness. Do you know much about CRISPR? Oh, I, yeah, I've I know a lot. Of, I I haven't. I know enough. They're re- I, they're trying to reproduce fucking humans, right? Or well, I mean, they're recreating. So I mean, depends. So CRISPR itself is like, it's like an editing tool. So they have this new form of CRISPR called Prime, which is extremely accurate. And I think I saw statistic it can get rid of like seventy percent of genetic diseases in the embryo by removing, by switching those genes because they can get it literally on that specific nucleotide. Um, like preventatively or... It would change your DNA. It would physically change your DNA. But like after you've identified a problem? It, so like what they can do, they can even do this now. So when you're pregnant, 
they'll do like a they'll draw fluid out of the like your embryo they'll like draw the eggs out like the fertilized eggs and they'll take a dna test to see what dna you have and they'll scan it for different genetic diseases you know see if you have certain type of phenotype, like basically like what your genes look like and then so they scan the, the fetus or the embryo before it grows in anything like it's a single cell organism it's just a fertilized egg cell with sperm just so you can measure the specific uh, like what what the DNA is, what the what the child's gonna be like, and then you get CRISPR, and then the step up of Prime, which goes in and you can find diseases that you want to fix, and it'll go in and specifically flip that DNA to the way it's supposed to be, so that those mutations don't occur. Mm. And it's literally like you can change specific, like it'll specifically change the whole entire organism. But what people don't understand about that kind of stuff is like. There's a somatic cell and there's a germ cell. If you fuck with your germ cells, it's not going to fuck with your body cells. If you if you have cancer, that's why if you have cancer, you can still have kids because you're not passing on your body genes. You're passing on your sperm genes, which are different because the DNA is different. I don't know. But your c- question was, what was your question about CRISPR? It's like they're – the way I saw it, they're trying to, like, be able to, like, reproduce, mm-hmm. like, make their own – genetically create a human. Well – that's it's not CRISPR itself. That's just cloning in general. Yeah, like yeah. Understanding how to create an environment for an embryonic cell. But they have like the technology. They they can not necessarily to do that, but like if the way that their technology is advancing. They, I, I mean, that's that's if, what it's moving. If towards. we focused on it, we probably like it would be possible to grow yeah. humans in bags. Like it's just like the fetus is a bag. It's a natural bag that holds fluid together that lets certain things pass. I mean, you could do that pretty easily. Um, but CRISPR itself does not create anything. It just purely, it's like eyes. it's like typing a paper, and you move the mouse and you click, delete a couple letters, and retype right, stuff. Right, that's right, that's right. what it does. But right. the cloning itself is a different process of just being able to get a, a fertile, like create a cell because. Once this once it starts growing, each cell has a designated purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and once it has a designated purpose, you usually can't go back to that original cell. But like if you clone something, like so that's what's the hard part is cloning. Like you can't just take a, a cell out of your body and just grow another human. You have to change it into a a uh, what's a stem cell. You guys heard of stem right, cells before? Right. It's a cell mm-hmm. with no program. So you basically got to change it into that. And then that's what a stem cell is. Yeah, yeah. it's a cell with no program. A cell which just it doesn't have any design purpose yet. And based on whatever chemicals that those cells are excreting during like development is will control basically how that like ligament, like what it grows into. Like when your hand's growing, like a certain chemical gets secreted by the cells that's designed by the DNA, by other chemicals that and are in the cells. And the stem cell responds accordingly? The stem cell will begin producing certain proteins and stuff that will design that cell to be that certain specific cell, like mm-hmm. a brain cell, a cardiac right. cell, a muscle cell. Based on, but it's all the same DNA. It's just different segments yeah, of the DNA right. that it's using, you know. So yeah, when you when you can go from creating a somatic to a stem cell and then getting that stem cell to grow into an embryo, that's when you can do cloning, which has been done before. They've cloned sheep, and like the same exact sheep. But it's not like it's crazy. The thing is with like <laughs> the thing is with cloning too is you get mutations over time. Right, that's what right. creates cancer. So like if you cloned a baby when the s- when before the DNA is mutated, then you know you have a better chance. But when you take like a 50 year old man who has a bunch of mutate, like you maybe you can't tell, but you're like, I mean, your skin sags, like your right. body isn't as healthy. So when you take right. a cell from a 50 year old man, that's what you're starting with. And, and now then it's going to mutate yeah. into a fucking 100 year old yeah. man when well, yeah, you're, you're gonna 10 have years a, old. You're going to have a newborn like, with 50 year old DNA. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, sorts yeah. of fucked up. Exactly, and then, that, yeah. then they're just, then that's why they die. So that's why they're so unsustainable is because they'll get born and they'll develop cancer in the first couple of years because their DNA isn't it's already been mutated. But if you can go back with CRISPR but and you fix can't all those genes recreate that's what you're saying. It's hard to once a cell has been made and has a chosen destination, yeah. it's hard to go back and But you also like you still have stem cells in your body. Like there's places you can visit oh, okay. inside your body. Like there's cuz you I mean you, your body produces them from different like you got to produce the stem Whatever cell it needs before. To be. Yeah. I don't know, your body is like the human body itself is an incredible machine. It's unbelievable the stuff. There's a lot of shit body. going on in, on in our body right now. Yeah, you can't like <laughs> you can't even conceive in your own brain what's going on inside your own body. Like, 
blows my at least blows my mind. Blows my mind, and but like it's also practical. Yeah. It'd be wild if we could. It's weird. I think it's weird that I'm reading about stuff that's going on in my cell, and I don't even like my body's every cell in my body. I don't even like. I don't know. Like I know it's happening, but I don't, don't understand. I don't understand the magnitude of like how perfect this has to be for this all to work together. You take a once. breath every second. Like you don't. That in itself is is a whole process. It's, you know, hundred thousand years of evolution just to breathe. Hundred thousand years of evolution to, you know, have a toe. You know, million years of evolution to learn how to walk. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can't conceive any of that time. <laughs> There was a theory that I read that, so, you know, the Earth is, you know, billions of years old. And, you know, we're talking about the difference between a million seconds to a billion seconds. So they're saying, you know, there's a possibility that two billion years ago, there was, a like, a race just like us, humans, that were dominant, had intelligence, created technology. And they could have disappeared and two billion years have passed and everything that was there has been completely erased. And we would have no idea that that even existed. It's a long time ago. <laughs> and there's no way for us to tell. Zero. Because it's all Archaeology, been. but how accurate is that yeah. going to be? We're just going to be trying to piece together the the puzzle that was left behind. Yeah. Where are you going to find a, a, a wall where part of it's, you know, just been sitting there for two billion years untouched? Yeah. Couldn't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> what if What if all civilization just dissipated? Like every human just went away tomorrow. But thousand years would be all the gone. infrastructure, everything. You think I everything? Mean, a million years, it'd probably all be gone. Like there'd probably be like stuff where it's like plastic and stuff, where there'd be remnants of it. But like buildings and stuff, it'd be overgrown and eaten away and destroyed. What about animals? I mean, they would evolve. I mean, animals would they will evolve no matter fine. what. They'll probably evolve to be different things over thousands of years, but. A deer wouldn't be what you'd call a deer now. It'd be different based on the environment right. that it's in. So all the skyscrapers, oh, everything? It'd be, it'd be, I mean, think of like, I mean, think about Chernobyl. Chernobyl is what, like 50? When that happened, you know, the 60s? So, I mean, it's you know, 50, 60 years, 70 years old. And that place is already like almost, I mean, it's run down. Shit, I mean, I don't think shit's fallen, but everything's been eaten away. Like, it's not a regular building anymore. It's just yeah. a cement block. Right. And that's been 60 years. What is Chernobyl? I've, r- I've heard Russia. of it. It's where the nuclear Correct. power plant, yeah. Or it's in Ukraine, I believe. Oh. I think it's, it's kind idiot. of dis- disputed territory mm-hmm. where it's kind of like between like you. Like it was kind of, they both claimed it, I guess, but. Ukraine and Russia? Mm-hmm. Okay. I, think, I, don't, I don't know really much, but basically that's where the, nu- that's where like the big nuclear react- reacting explosion happened. That's where the. Uh, oh, okay. It's like where the. Uh, for the maps on Call of Duty, Nuketown. Yeah, nuke that's like where that's where like Nuketown comes from, right? Pretty much. I mean, stat- I mean, it the it concept. Comes, it comes yeah. from like the American like nuclear test programs where they would mm-hmm. be in Nevada, in the open desert, and they'd make like special towns and blow them up with nukes to see the effects of the nuclear bombs. That was like in the middle of ne- New Mexico or Nevada in the desert. I'm assuming that was going on in like the during 60s. World War Two. Yeah. Okay. To develop a nuclear, I'm sure they were probably doing stuff after 40s. too. Forties. I guess that'd be like the forties, thirties, forties. I'm sure, it was forties, fifties, sixties. Like I'm yeah. sure they continued to develop a strong. Because I mean, they made the hydrogen bomb after they dropped the atomic bomb, so they were obviously still doing research. But yeah, I mean, it's been sixty years and it's run down with a shit ton of radiation, which makes it hard for animals and plants to grow. But there's already plants growing back that are now like genetically designed to be like resistance to radiation mm-hmm. already. Yeah. And there's already animals back living there. It's wild. So like nature will prevails. Yeah, it nature will always win. There's unless you kill it completely off the planet Earth, it will always come back and take over what it wants. Nature doesn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. That's basically it will what find a way. We're not as important as we think we are. We're not. <laughs> we're important because we took a claim and we decided we're important. But yeah. as soon as something decides we're not, we're fucked. Unless we can stop that, we decide we're more important. We were talking about pandemics today, mm. earlier, like the, like a like a black plague or something like that. Oh. It's something. Well, you, dude, the black plague popped up in yeah, where Spain today. There's two people in China that yeah. got caught with the the worst form of the bubonic plague. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Has it like evolved or mutated? I mean, that's that's when they say like the worst form of it. 
I guess there's different types, like different. When you talk about strains of like viruses and bacteria, it's the same bacteria, but they have certain mutations that make them more or less efficient attacking the body. Which like, how long does it take modern medicine to catch up to that? That yeah, it's it's probably too long. <laughs> too long, like probably too long. Yeah, before potentially millions die. Well, that's what you're talking about. That's crazy. Like, I didn't. I did not hear about that. Well, well imagine, just, imagine that person, one of the person catches the plague, and they rent a hotel room, and then give it to two other people on their floor. One person flies to the United States the next day. One person flies to Germany the next day. Yeah, right. It infects too fifteen late. people there. Fifteen like it, it, it can spread so easily. Have you guys ever seen the movie Contagion before? Mm-hmm. No. We, watched, we watched that in biology. Yeah. Literally describes. A p- if a pandemic happened, that's how it would. That's happen. how they would treat it. Like yeah. that's how, if they were to make a cure, that's how the whole, like that's probably at its best. That's how it would work out. Scientifically accurate. It's, it's a pretty crazy movie. It's freaky because it shows how vulnerable humans are to everything. Just because we're not designed to survive crazy shit like that. Nah. <laughs> like space, we go to space, shit fucks you up. Yeah. There's a cool guy that. But he has an identical twin, so they spent they sent one of the twins up to space, and they kept the other one down on Earth, and he like had a really long space trek, and then they brought him because you know they're identical, they have the same DNA, so they measured him before to see what the differences were, and then he came back, and then they compared their DNA to see how space, but it like totally fucked up his shit, like all kinds of stuff was like totally out of whack, good or bad, both. Was Your he adapting to space, and that's why? The body adapts to survive in space, but it's still confused on what the fuck's going on, so not everything's right. It's kind of like when you spend a semester alone, sort of. You're just kind of altering through. my DNA in some way. It's not livable for long periods of time, but your body is strong. As sensitive as your body is, it is strong enough to deal in those habitats for an extended period of time. Are you different now than before, living by yourself? First semester? I'd say so. I'd say so. Yeah, it made me think about things differently. I I don't know. I challenge myself to think about different problems and kind of try to figure out solutions to them in in solitude and just my own mind. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. I really think the more you understand yourself, the better you get at understanding other people and, like, reflecting on how they think. That's wisdom right there. The more you understand how your thought process, it lets you, like, understand that other people are in that same kind of mentality. To be able to think how other people think, you need to know how you think. Yeah. you got to be able to reflect on yourself. Makes sense. We're all walking books. Yeah. You think about, uh, Mm -hmm. that's something else that blows my fucking mind. There are so many damn people, and you go up to each different person, and every story, completely everything will be different. I mean, there will be similarities, but it's every. There might be the same exact thing, but it was different people, different place, different time. Like it's you and I, it's unique. You and I hang out a bunch, so like we would think we're super similar. But and then, if like we get down to the facts, like we're probably not at all. It's been really st- <laughs> we're all been we're like right now. We're all having a very different experience still. Yeah. I've thought about as that too. Similar as it is. Like the like if if you were if you and me were to go out and like enjoy a day together like i don't know do whatever like go eat lunch go do something like the way i would the way i experienced that day and the way you experienced that day were probably so different like and it's hard to even conceive that i feel like yeah. but you have to understand that, that there's a difference and listen to that person like we might have both had a super good time but like the reason you had a good time and the reason i had a good time are probably not the same you know like we, who knows? Maybe we go to Sky Zone, then we go out to eat, and then we go bowling. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I hated bowling, and yeah. it's like, oh, that was my favorite part. Yeah. And we probably, I hated it maybe for the same reason you liked it. Who knows? Yeah. It's weird. Like we, like even it, like even when we hang out together all the time, like the way you're experiencing it and the way I'm experiencing it are, are probably a complete 180. And you can't even. But we begin. still might be, be both having fun. Yeah, you can There's no way that yeah. I could ever describe or say what you're feeling to anybody else ever. I don't think in any situation you could ever describe somebody else's emotions. 
could you describe your own? That's the thing, too. It's like, how do you even describe your own? It's hard enough to say your own feelings. Yeah, let alone s- somebody else's. A whole else's. different person's <laughs> understanding of the world. Which kind of <laughs> ties back exactly what Mason was saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Understanding yourself, yeah. It's weird. It's a weird world. Mm. You guys want to wrap this up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Cool. I'm starting it's to get weird. tired. Thinking honestly. the same thing. I'm gonna go do you guys have any last do. thoughts? Any I appreciate you having us on. Yeah, I liked you. it a lot. I like to come back on. Thank Hell you yeah, had me for sure. It's a unique Hell experience. Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, like being completely transparent, I don't know if we'll have time between now and graduation. Because oh I yeah. before I was like, Hell yeah, Hell yeah, like yeah. I'm down. Um, but possibly, possibly, I'm never gonna say no. I'm not gonna, but I'm not gonna say oh yes yeah. unless it's like for sure yes. Oh yeah. But I'm down if that if, if that it makes happens. sense. Yeah, exactly. Well, I appreciate it. And it doesn't have to be like between now and tomorrow. Who knows? It's no commitment. It's just work on what happens. Yep. Exactly. Well, thank you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for coming on. I yeah, appreciate sir. it. I appreciate it. Sorry your video camera died. Oh, no, it happens every single yeah. time. <laughs> it's all good. It's It lasts about, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Was that two and a half hours? Yeah, three, like three exactly. Holy shit. <laughs> wow, that's that's insane. Is that cool?